Ti. After Waco Neiman's thrilling win over Sergio Garcia in Mexico's duel in the dark, the Live Golf League has landed on US soil for the first time in 2024. And what a moment to hit the bright lights of Las Vegas, Nevada. Vegas is at the epicenter of the sporting world this week and provides the perfect platform for our world-class field of 54 players and 13 teams. This is Live Golf Las Vegas, and it all starts right now. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Come on in. Let's do this thing. I'm fired up to have you in my town. Las Vegas, baby. And just so you know, this place is about to be wild. Even though I'm not playing, my juices are flowing. I got to go practice. What do you think I was talking about? Sensational. Champagne's popping. And all the stars are here. The best players and teams in the world in this city for the first time. Simply magnificent. Yeah, we got them. Ice cool. The most incredible action. Yeah, we got that. To the delight of the watering hole. Absolutely incredible. We came a golfing genius. Hard hits. Unrelenting play. Guys willing to lay it all on the line. Yeah, we got that. I heard there may be another game in town this week. But I know this. The game before the game is going to be the game. Yes, pure box office. So welcome to Vegas, baby. It's what I live for. Live Golf's high rollers have hit Vegas to stake their reputations in the hope of striking the golfing jackpot. John Rahm's Legion 13 conquered Maya Cobra in week one and should feel even more at home this close to Caesars Palace. It's high time that Dustin Johnson's four aces produced a hand to flush out the competition. Bryson DeChambeau, Brooks Kepka, and Phil Mickelson also hope to run the table at the famous Las Vegas Country Club. Our field is the most formidable in golf, featuring 14 major champions, and our shotgun starts. It's just moments away. Hello, everybody, from wherever you're watching across the globe. Welcome to a somewhat chilly Las Vegas Country Club here in Nevada as we get things started on day one. An unusual Thursday start for us this week. I think the reason why is fairly obvious. We can't wait. But, David, until or before we get into uh, what's going to uh, transpire here over the next three days, we've got to re reminisce and remember what happened in Mayakoba. I mean, look at Waco Neiman lifting the trophy in the dark. He won it in the dark after yeah. a four-hole playoff, an extraordinary circumstances with Sergio Garcia what are your memories of that day well the 59 obviously is one of the great memories and then he kind of got shaky from there on and until he lost the lead towards the end and that sort of motivated him to get back into it and uh, and that finish in the dark I've only ever seen one like it and that was Tiger Woods and Firestone so he's in great company it was extraordinary so Waco had a two-shot penalty before his final round and he managed to get it to 12 under par with this birdie at 16 and he finished level with Sergio Garcia who was surging at the time fourth playoff hole in the dark the only light being provided by the Jumbotron at the side of the green and that was his birdie put at the fourth playoff hole to win the title. So, Waco Neiman, the man to catch in the individual events. I don't think there's any doubting who's to catch in the team event. John Rahm, Tyrrell Hatton and a couple of young guys took the Live Golf World by storm winning the team event, didn't they? They're the team to beat here. 
Yeah, and uh, young Caleb Surratt, who had difficulty checking into his hotel room at 19 <laughs> years old. Uh, you know, he uh, triple bogeys 13 uh, on Sunday with a four putt, and then birdies the last five. What an exciting prospect he is. Yeah, he could spray the champagne in my coba, he just couldn't drink it. Yeah. And Tyrrell Hatton had to provide his driving license in order for Caleb to check into his hotel. We're just getting started here in Las Vegas. It is a bit chilly out there, but the action is going to be red hot. We'll be with our entire a broadcast team in a few moments time this is live golf las vegas Well, there's the scene. Uh, the sun is shining, which is nice. We had a, a rainy couple of days here in Las Vegas when we arrived from sunny Mayakoba, but it is chilly out there, and uh, we are joined by Jerry Foltz. You've been out there on the range. A native. Christian, of, a native of this of part of the Las world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Nevada, not there Nevada. Go. Very good, yes. As I might pronounce yes, it. Yes. But uh, it's, it is cold out there. I mean, is it going to affect things, or is it just, is it just uh, something that the players are going to have to get on with? Obviously? Yeah, it's unseasonably cold. No, it'll affect things. Nobody likes playing in cold weather, but everybody has had to deal with it in their professional careers or amateur careers in the case of Caleb Surratt. Mm. Um, some have excelled at it, mostly guys who grew up playing and competing as pros in Europe. Uh, might have a little bit of an advantage in this type of weather, but for the most part, this course uh, favors a type of player who could control the golf ball and uh, dealing with some little bit of breeze out there as well. Not going to be easy, but it's uh, we might see some low scores, David. Yeah, there are certain players that are just you know geared for playing in, in cold and bad weather. You know, I think of Sandy Lyle was one anytime he had his waterproofs or you know a thick jersey or anything like that on you know he was always in the lead or close to it tom watson you know you don't win five open championships nearly six <laughs> without being able to play in cold weather for mickelson it may be a day for for beanies for some of the players today why is he wearing just a t-shirt that's a good question Phil captain of the High Flyers. That could hoping be a sweater. to improve performance here in Las Vegas. After a tricky start to his season in Mayakoba. Seven and a half minutes to go until our shotgun start. You can see Dustin Johnson, captain of the four aces, is wrapped up against the elements. I feel totally comfortable here being a Brit, but it is unseasonably chilly. Freezing. And you're from this part of the world, Jerry, as well. And it is rather cold out there. Yeah, the mountains to our west, Mount Charleston, where they actually have a ski resort. The roads up there were closed for a couple of days. There's so much snow on it. It's almost down to the base of Mount Charleston. Unseasonably cold, but uh, not terrible. Not this. There's a lot of other parts of America and all parts of the world where this is not bad weather. Yes, absolutely. Now, we had a fan vote on uh, Live Plus, our app, as to who would tee off together of the captains. And perhaps it's no surprise that Bryson DeChambeau, uh, that Brooks Kepka and John Rahm will tee off together today off the second hole. Uh, talk about box office and talk about competitors. That is going to be a fascinating group to follow. Today. Yeah, that'll be an amazing group to follow. And we've got, you know, we've got DJ, Brooks and Cam, who, uh, you know, they kind of threatened at times last week and then sort of fell back a little, you know, to keep an eye on those guys um, uh, as well. Yeah, well, you got a bunch of heavy hitters. The fact of the matter is we have great players on Live Golf and they all are competitors. They all want to win. They all want to beat each other. They all want to, they all want to come out on top of and prove themselves week in and week out. It's a different format, no question about it. But the more you get used to it, the more the fans realize this is still world-class golf and always will be, and it just keeps getting better and better. John Rahm had an interesting introduction to live golf, didn't he? He, he bogeyed his last two holes, so failed to get into a playoff, and he was massively disappointed with himself, but then was lifted by the fact that his young team, Legion 13, then won the team competition. So immediately, John
John Rahm now knows what it's all about in this league. Yeah, I mean, he really, you know, made his presence felt right off the right off the bat. And that team win, you know, has got to be encouraging for him as well as the rest of those those guys, um, you know, on that Legion 13 side. It was uh, it was a really remarkable performance. Yeah, and his interview as well when he was done, he went instantly, almost instantly, from disappointed individual yep. competitor to proud dad yeah. almost. Yeah. Yes. And then the hugs, the genuine emotion in his face with that team when they celebrated it was pretty yeah. cool. Caleb Surratt, Kieran Vincent, and Tyrrell. Hatton, who was fantastic on the uh, final day. He's a two-time Masters champion, and he's a Golden Knights fan. Look at this. Las Vegas Golden Knights of the NHL. Welcome to the Fortress. Bubba Watson. So he's had a lot of fun so far this week, and Sue Ann Hencord up with Bubba on the putting green. Well, I'm here on the putting green, and I've got captain of the Range Goats GC, Bubba Watson. Bubba, I remember last year you mentioned that you were chasing down the Aces, you're chasing Torque. Now with the addition of Legion 13 and them coming in with their first win last week, how does that change the dynamic for you guys? <laughs> I'm just thankful we are off that tight golf course. Um, <laughs> us long hitters, I know there's some big hitters that, that uh, won and played really good last week. Um, our team is thankful that we're away from Mayakoba, not because of the beauty, not because of how great the golf course is, but how tight it is. And um, so we're looking forward to it. Um, this golf course, um, it's going to give away a lot of birdies. So hopefully we can have more than everybody else. But um, but yeah, having John Rahm and his team um, step up like that, um, obviously that sets the bar high. Uh, we gotta, we're got we chasing. Well, you played well last week. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you feeling confident going into this week? I feel good. Um, it comes down, you know, my whole thing is putting. Uh, ball striking is there. My leg is stronger. You know, the second year after surgery is when you're uh, probably at your peak. And so um, I'm looking forward to it. Been working hard. Lost some weight. Uh, I'm trying to get in shape. And um, it's been fun so far. And um, hopefully I can keep the good play going. Thanks, Bubba. Play well today. All right. Thank you very much. Bubba talked about the course. It's dripping in golfing history. There's a statue to Dean Martin outside yeah. the clubhouse as well. The Rat Pack used to play here back in the 60s when it was uh, first open. Fuzzy Zeller won the first million dollar purse in golf history here in 1983. Our uh, uh, CEO, uh, Greg Norman, has won here in 1986 as well. So there's a lot of history here. How's it going to play, David? Well, it's a short golf course by, you know, most people's standards. Uh, and, you know, Bubba is saying, you know, it, it's uh, it's a little more open than last week. Well, it's, it's I don't think it is. You know, it's a tight golf course as well. But the thing about this one is if you do hit it offline, you're going to have a chance to play a recovery shot, Jerry. You know, we're going to see it under trees, over trees, around trees. You know, it should be fun. Well, last week felt kind of claustrophobic to them because the fairways were, mo were just formed in so yeah. much from the mangroves and from the jungle and from the beaches and what have you. Um, this one doesn't have that feeling, but there's OB on both sides of every single hole. Well, let's head back out to the course and speak to our course analysts and find out what to watch for here on day one of Live Golf Las Vegas. Don Belay, we'll start with you. What's the mindset for these players today? Well, well, every golfer I've spoken to this week thinks north of 20 under is going to win this week. But given the conditions today, I don't think so. But the sentiment is you've got to be aggressive, make a ton of birdies. Usually in this game, pars don't hurt you, but this week week they might well you want to watch out for the greens this week they have severe slopes and all of them making the landing spot a lot smaller it's going to test the precision from the fairways and the iron play from these guys it's also going to test their creativity around the greens Thank you, Sue Ann. Thanks to Don. Plenty more to come from them throughout the three days, of course. It's a spectacular scene. We're not far away from the strip here in Las Vegas and Nevada as the sporting world descends on Las Vegas for a big game on Sunday. But we've got three big days of golfing action before we get there. Dean Burmester, who was excellent in Mayakoba, but he said if you'd have told him on Sunday morning, you go 400 today, you win the competition, he'd have taken that. He didn't quite perform. Uh, to his level. Look at the four aces themed Vegas hats there as worn by HV3, Harold Varner the third. The four aces have a lot of improvements to do. HV3 is a new signing, a trade. Peter Uline went to the Range Goats, but
but they finished in 12th out of 13, and they haven't taken that particularly well. No, but they've done that before. They finished last in Greenbrier last year and still had a, a tremendous season. Dustin Johnson doesn't panic about anything in life, much less one yeah. bad week for his team. <laughs> yeah, they totally sucked last week. There's <laughs> no did. other way to put it. By their mighty standards, only the third time they finished outside of the points in their live golf history, our inaugural champions in 2022. We're about to get underway here. Waco Neiman top left, 59 in round one last week. That was 12 under par. He went into a playoff with Sergio Garcia on 12 under par and eventually won in the darkness in dramatic circumstances on the fourth playoff hole. We are going to start at the second tee and the captain of the victorious expansion team Legion 13 looking to go back to back in their first two events. John Rahm, 10 under par, two off the lead in Mayakoba, and he gets us underway in our shotgun start here at Live Golf Las Vegas. Bogued 17 Olé! and 18 Olé! on Sunday to miss that playoff, but of course his team were victorious. It's just what David was talking about right there. Last week that tee shot was probably oh. in a penalty area. Yeah, it was history. Next to the tee at three, and Cam Smith, who flirted with the leaders partway through his round on Sunday, birdied seven of the first ten, but three bogeys put paid to his chances of winning. He tied for eighth with Louis Oosthuizen and, and Tyrrell Hatton. That's Brooks off the tee at two, and that might run out of room on the right side of the fairway. Is it? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Our champion in Mayakoba, the 13th individual champion in live golf history, Wako Neiman, tees off at one. I don't know uh, what Bubba was thinking, saying this golf course isn't tight. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty narrow. Well, we've seen four tee shots and not a single one on the short grass. Well, Bryson DeChambeau was out of the mix in terms of winning the individual title in Mayakoba, but he went round in 68 on Sunday, and that helped the Crushers climb the pylon, and they got a second-place finish behind Legion 13. There we go. Absolutely pummeled right there. Dustin Johnson, captain of the four aces on the tier three. Well, this will be great fun. Three days of world-class golfing action from just off the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Live Golf Las Vegas. matchup yesterday with Waco said Sergio on Monday could have maybe gone for a few more in the darkness <laughs> here we go for another week and it was the galleries that were chanting one more hole yeah. one more hole and yeah. fair play to the pair of them in virtual darkness to go for a fourth playoff hole fair play to the jumbotron or else you know we might still be there <laughs> they were due to come back Monday morning weren't they but mm -hmm. uh, that fourth hole did the trick Waco Neiman with a birdie and he took the title the That's 16th Anna tee, Anna Van Lahiri. Good, nice Good shot there. But they, you see the slopes in these greens? They are uh, they're small and they are tricky. A few mountain ranges surrounding the Las Vegas Valley, Southern Nevada most prominently by Mount Charleston to the west, where there is a ski area, a ski hill. 
Yeah, you were saying that yeah. it's about 35, 40 minutes from here. From here, you can ski. From here, you can ski a wow. lot. Yes. Hey, and at night as well. Lee Canyon, it used to be called. I'm not sure if it's been renamed. To our east and southeast is sunrise. They'll get some snow, but it doesn't stay long because of the direction they're facing the sun. Red Rock Canyon, not far away. Well, isn't that a spectacular sight? This is the second fairway with the Las Vegas Strip as the backdrop. Suan, you're following this group, and this is John Rahm's ball we're looking at. Yeah, as uh, you guys have already mentioned, it isn't the same as last week. And John certainly has a shot into today's right hole location. Now, really interesting, a lot of these guys with their first tee shots, uh, the first time they're hitting their driver today, it's a bit of a traditional golf course, very small driving range. They can't hit anything more than a seven iron. So a lot of these guys haven't hit their drivers yet. Some try and keep it low in the driving range, but. Pocket there, that is him. Well, we think Brooks is first. With a third shot, he's taking relief. Yeah, he's just missed this right and it went in the water. Uh, it is cold out here, guys. You sound like you're out of breath out there. Is that cold? <laughs> it is cold. Just a typical Singapore day, though, so. No. No? Just let the wind take it. On that front there, it's only, you only got about 145 cover there at the corner, okay? John was the highest round of all four Legion 13 players on Sunday as they took the title. Would have never guessed that. No. 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 All four scores counting when we get to the final round, which will be Championship Saturday this week. And you're trying to hit a cut in there, and it's difficult from the rough to make the ball move the way you want it to. Oh, he wants to come out dead straight on you. Okay. Brooks is third shot. Nine iron. Wind's coming from the 10 o'clock, so it's hurting just ever so slightly. Trying to fade one in. This is looking pretty good. Oh, oh wow. You know, that's, you know, judging these lies from the rough is going to be a, a task again this week. This Here's, guy's pretty good at it. Yes, he is. If he drives the ball well, I think, you know, he will be a serious contender this week. Started on Sunday on three under par. He birded his first five holes, Cam Smith. And here's Monkey. another guy that can really make this golf course look very short. I think with Brooks's ball, that wind just picked up. It's the ball's in the air. Hurting. Pretty well done there from Bryson. Dials in the distance nicely. Jason Kokrak for birdie on his first hole today. This is number 16. Great start for Jason Kokrak, who plays for Brooke Kepka's, Brooks Kepka's team smash. Short sleeves to DJ, no messing around for the big man. Second shot at three. Bubba, back at the first. Yeah, great tee shot. Right down the middle of the fairway. Soft conditions. So lift clean and place. But, uh, on a downhill lie, so I'm gonna have trouble getting it higher. Oh, it's pretty high and it's a pretty good line. Well, Live Golf continues to bring golf but louder to exciting venues and cities. Needless to say, the players had this event circled in their calendars. Vegas, baby. Come on. Man, I'm pumped. It's party city, you know? I think it's going to be really cool to, to showcase the talent in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas could be unbelievable. Being so close to the Strip, so many people are in town. 
I'm definitely very excited about that. Live Golf to Las Vegas with the Super Bowl is one of the best things that we could have done. Those fans are the same fans that would really enjoy and appreciate what Live Golf has to offer. We're going to Las Vegas Country Club. It's a golf course that I really like. You know, it's in my hometown, right on the strip. It'll be popping. Very excited about playing out of home because my record at home is pretty good. But yeah, I think it could be at a lot of people, it could get noisy. Vegas, Super Bowl weekend. Really won't get any better than that. I've been repeatedly told off by our producer and you, Jerry, who are uh, residents who were born in this state for saying Nevada. So yeah. I'm going to say Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Rescues the situation on the second hole. Nice par. Yeah, that's a par. Brendan Steele for Birdie. This is just a second to go at eight. His first hole of the day, and he's one under. Now, John, with a birdie opportunity in the second hole, going to see a lot of these putts today. Big, breaking, sloping putts. It's going to be slow in the first 25, 30 feet, and it's downhill from there. Yeah, well, we can see the grain change so clearly there. Oh, and that is uh, what he was doing last week with the longer putts. Difficulty finding the weight. Caleb Surratt. The rat. <laughs> I, I asked him if he would mind us calling him the baby-faced assassin, because that's what he looks like to us. Um, he said, no, nah, it's not too flattering. Everybody calls me the rat. Okay, yeah. that sounds even less flattering, I, but I, if that's his choice. My thoughts exactly. <laughs> Welco at one, his third shot. Yeah, he pulled his tee shot, nothing, no option but to play it back out to the fairway. He needs to go, watch the spin. Uh, A contrasting three days for Welco Neiman, and he showed great character to come out as uh, Live Golf Mayakoba Victor. Now this is Bryson DeChambeau for birdie. Got a decent read from John. It's going to move left in the first bit and then left to right at the end. Well. <coughs> Dustin Johnson for birdie at three to start his day. He's bundled up with the scarf. Or uh, I don't know if that's a hoodie or what that is. Oh, here's, here's a serious beanie we got going here with Lee Westwood. These guys, the Majestics, should be able to take advantage of this cold weather. This is this is fairly warm for Westy. Yes. Lim lives these days in the northeast of England. Now John Rom, this far apart. He was tied 42nd in putting last week. Hopefully improve on that stat this week. Don't want to start with a three putt, that's for sure. Meanwhile, Cam Smith for birdie at three. Great start for the captain of the All-Australian Ripper GC. Brandon Grace for birdie at 17. Good start for Brandon Grace of Stinger GC, the South Africans, after a, a tricky outing for him in Mayakoba last weekend. Decent chance for an eagle, as he said to Suan in his interview, it's all about this club. If you look at the airplane in the water there, yeah. if you've seen the film Casino, you'll know what that's all about. That was the FBI airplane that ran out of fuel yeah. in the movie, and it was an event that actually occurred. It did, yeah. It landed here on the golf course, a la Harrison Ford. Well, if you've yet to sign up for Live Golf Plus, you're missing out on something pretty special. Download the app from the App Store, just like you would Netflix, Paramount Plus, or Peacock. But unlike those, the beauty of Live Golf Plus is that it's absolutely free. 
That's right, absolutely free. Once there, you can enjoy live, commercial-free Live Golf action, or you can replay every Live Golf round ever played. For a golf fan, it's heaven. And did I mention it was free? How much is it? It is zero dollars and cents. Right. Brooks on the tee at three. Wind's helping. A little from the right. It's 284 to carry the bunker on the right side of this fairway. Uh, this is headed right. Oh, that was dangerously close to the backyard there. Well, this would be a big moment for Harold Varner the third. He has this for birdie at four. He, by his own admission, was way off the pace at 14 over par. Then Maya Koba knows he needs to improve as a member of the four aces, and that's a great start. Long iron for Bryson on the tee at three. The chicken stick. Look at that. This chicken stick doesn't grip. go very short, though, David. <laughs> The grip size actually might be bigger than a modern baseball bat uh, yeah. where you hold it. Might be thicker. Phil can start with birdie at 18 potentially here. John Rahm coming off a bogey at his first hole, the second. Not the start he wanted. Uh, hopefully he can find the fairway with this drive. Next to work the ball left to right. Well, that's the scene here, 54 players out on the golf course. Live Golf Las Vegas is off and running. Eugenio Chicada is a fireball, captained by Sergio Garcia, his third at 10. Beautifully done. Harold Varner on the par three fifth. Yeah. Oh, what a good start for Harold. Over at 15, Carlos Ortiz for birdie. Sergio. Boy, he did some of that last week too. So close to his first live golf victory after that playoff with Waco Neiman. The second time he's come up in second place after a playoff following defeat to Taylor Gooch in Singapore last year. The Majestics and the High Flyers have started well in the team competition. Last week's winners, Legion 13, down in 13th, one over par in the very early stages. And Arlo, the reason our producer constantly corrects you about how to pronounce the name of the state. Mm -hmm. Like I once told the president of the Golf Channel when I worked for him, and I said, it's, I corrected him, said it's Nevada. He goes, oh, that's what you call it when you live there? I said, no, it actually happens to be the name of the state. <laughs> 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 I hope... I hope one day that we play in Maryland. <laughs> yeah. Ian Poulter, one of three captains of the all European Majestics on the tee at five. He's going beanie and ball cap. Oh! oh. Take that. He's got the quarterback's hand warmer on there. Jessic's GC on X calculating yardages <laughs> when in Vegas. I uh, I lost my shorts at the hotel this morning. 
Yeah. It was the housekeeper. She'd put them in the drawer. <laughs> and I didn't expect that, you know. That's, that's full service for you when they unpack for you, you know. I thought you meant yeah. at one of the tables. No, 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 no. That's the, the one vice I never had. <laughs> Now, Bryson, here for a second on the third hole. Was it right? Yeah. Kind of like this left to right slope, if anything, a hair away from us. Yeah. Keep forward, downwind, six, seven? Yeah, I'd go more towards seven. Oh, how many do you want to land short? Just right on it's fine. Right on it? Well, here, let me oh, just show you this. It's just, oh, no, 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 too short. Yeah, so too short. this is one we want to hit at. Like, I would say, if anything, if it's a yard or two, I'd go on the left side. Yeah, for sure, I agree. So 152, you want to, so you're thinking like Seven. a one? Yeah, 145. Yeah. It's perfect. Yeah. This is definitely one of his five wedges in his bag. Today's whole location's on that top deck. Definitely want to fly that false front. Not false front, but a huge mount. Right all the way back. It's a bit of a backstop. Back of the screen. Pitching wedge. Uh, good shot. From there, get the club once you intend to swing, because that's the outer side of it. Now we're in front of the third, no, and Ian Holter right. made yeah. their birdies at yeah. five. And then from, from that point, one club like the closer to the hole. One of the little intricacies of the rules of golf, you have to take complete relief for stance and swing when you get abnormal condition like that. Basically, what we used to call casual water. Louis Tazen. Has it to two under. Solid start to the season for Louis. Tied eighth with Tyrrell Hatton and Cam Smith last weekend. Now Lee Westwood's Majestics have gone 17 events without a podium finish. This was his third at the 15th of part five. He made birdie there. Could it be the Majestics week in the chill of Nevada? Calais Samoya, second live event for him after promotion in Abu Dhabi. That was for birdie at 10. He plays for the Cliques. Jinichiro Kozuma, live golf promotions event. Uh, successful candidate. Beautiful wedge shot there behind the hole. And a lot of the guys who don't overpower the course really, really like their chances this week. This is not a, a bomber's paradise, if you will. Um, if the guys who struggle to keep it up with them off the tee are going to have a little fairer hand here because they're all going to be hitting scoring clubs into the greens and there is a premium for hitting it in the fairway here so you don't have trouble shots yeah. like this. Also, play and lift clean in so place in round one, okay most likely round one only. Now Brooks. John Rahm next to play. Man, he flushed that drive. He's way down. Just a little flip wedge here. Ball below his feet. Can throw those all the way back there. Greens are fairly receptive. Stuff by John Rahm. Now, Torque is one of only two teams without a major champion on its roster, but that hasn't kept this squad from being one of the favorites to win it all. We're committed to one goal. That goal is to be the best team, and we're pushing towards it.
Now Torquay are the team that are moving and shaking. At the end, we all want the same result. And when all your guys are working hard, it's kind of put that extra pressure. OK, I'm not going to be the one falling behind. You know, they don't just work well as a team. They work really hard to work well as a team. We got a, a really nice group. We try to help each other as much as we can. We all speak the same language. And that puts Torquay at the top of the team pylon with the holes running out. I'm head to head, we're going against 12 teams now, and you know, we're very poised to take on that challenge. Sebastian Munoz will not go down lightly. Just try to play your best game, and if it turns out you're winning four times, it turns out it's not. Just keep your head down and keep going. Torquay victorious in the team competition. I'm really happy to be with these guys, and it happened how it's supposed to, maybe a year later, but it's kind of like a family. Change for this team from last season. David Puj is now with the Fireballs. Carlos Ortiz is a member of Torque. They had a three stroke lead going into the final round in Mayakobel. They struggled but held on to third place, and that is wonderful from Sebastian Munoz. For a birdie from the edge of the green. Adrian Moronk on the tee at eight. That'll do nicely. Charles Hortzel with his second shot at the 10th. Bogeyed his first hole, the ninth. Nine and 10 as the players compete here this week are one and 18 for the oh, members, and they are converted par fives into par fours for this week. So yeah. two of the more difficult par fours for the week. John Rahmer's uh, tapped in for birdie at three to get it back to level par, and this is Brooks Kepka. And taking full advantage of the lift clean in place, but a full club length. Got it to a slightly flatter spot for Brooks. And this is going to be a slow putt up this hill. Really slow. Wow. This is Matthew Wolf for birdie at uh, 12. Yes. Caleb Surratt, his third at 14. And what a final round he had yeah, to help Legion 13 to their inaugural victory. He went bogey, triple bogey, after a four putt at 17. He's at it again. Yeah. Wow. For birdie at 14. But he birded his final five holes. And in the end, Legion 13 won by four. So that was absolutely vital on his Live Golf debut. Bryson on the live line. Oh. Oh, just a little speedy. Didn't look like it had a chance to miss. The par five first, and Sir Philip M M Mickelson. Mick Mickelson. Mick Mickelson, yes. Made him Irish for the day. <laughs> yeah, beautiful shot right at the flag. Elsewhere, Jason Kokrak has started in fabulous form. He is two under par, tied for the lead. After this birdie three at 17. His captain Brooks Kepka at three has this for par. Smash tied for the team lead in the early stages on three under with Stinger GC. Awkward seven footer there. You can see the change of grain just about three feet short of the hole. Well done. Yeah. The third member of Smash GC is Graeme McDowell. This for birdie at seven. That helped them to three under it and that share of the lead with Stinger. Pretty good course for McDowell, yes. as you say, in his style of play, isn't it? That's for sure. Yeah. From Royal Port Rush. Tyrrell Hatton for birdie at four, member of the Legion 13 team. 
the low score of the entire field on Sunday with a 64. That was crucial in their victory, and he is one under par in the early stages. Cameron Trungali. Oh, he played that beautifully. From that birdie, here's Tyrrell Hatton on the tee at five. <laughs> and he made the point that it was motivating right. for him after oh. a disappointing opening couple of rounds in Mayakoba oh. that you're out there playing for three other guys in the final the round. Shot. He gets a nice kick there, back onto the putting surface. It's definitely a reason yeah. why I play pings when I hit it that shit. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. The first $10 in the swear there. jar of 2024 yeah, for Tyrrell. It's, it's so perfect coming down the park. It is so funny. So perfect. Criminal. Cameron Smith looking really good to start. Now John Rahm on the tee at four. And in two and off the right. Probably looking to aim this at that TV tower in the background, which is about left center of this fairway. Drove the ball so well last week. A few moments ago, Waco Neiman for birdie at two. Oh yes, carrying on that sumptuous form from Maya Cobra in week one, our champion in Mexico. Now Brooks on the fourth, he led in driving last week. No one is. Well, that's on a fairway. Phil for Eagle. Now Bryson, with the big stick, hold on to your hats. Early stages here in Las Vegas, Smash GC lead the team competition, Phil at the top of the pylon individually. Sergio on the tee at number three. One of the wider fairways. Not very. <laughs> yeah. Traditional style golf course. Opened in 1967. It's had a few minor tweaks, but nothing major. Bravo. 
Oh, time for a don't blink, I think. And Danny Lee of the Ironheads is a resident of Las Vegas, like his captain, Kevin Narp. And that is a good start for Danny Lee. Birdie at hole number 10. Yunichiro Kazuma promoted in Abu Dhabi. He's an iron head as well, and that is for birdie at three. So a decent start for Kevin Nas iron heads. And Mickelson, this was for birdie at one to get his day off to a really nice start. Birdie, birdie. Justin Johnson, Cameron Smith and Tyrrell Hatton have reached the green at five and this is DJ's birdie putt. Well, there's a brand new team with fantastic new merchandise, new players for which to cheer, familiar teams with new faces and new logos. The team gear is all available on site at the merch tents or online. Just go to Live Golf League events or log into shop.livegolf.com and grab a Legion hoodie, a Range Goats quarter zip, a Crusher's golf towel, or even a Four Aces polo. 13 teams, 54 players, dozens of items that'll make your golf buddies day. Back out to the fourth. Yeah, I mean, Brooks is over there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the sixth fairway. He's got an open shot. No issue at all. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. That's why I'm so, Sometimes it is. Bit of a job for Ricky Elliott to get the yardage. Well, they can use well, range finders now. They got range finders, yep. Yeah, we'll stay straight right now. He's got some furniture in the way. It's not bad. Tyrrell Hatton to carry on where he left off in Mayakoba. Birdie put at five for the Legion 13 man. Tyrrell has come to play two under par in the early stages of Live Golf Las Vegas. I think John is going to go ahead and hit his ball first. It's blocked by a tree. He's going to try and punch this and work it left to right into this front hole location. Yeah, you can see him hold that club face it's open. Right Trying to run it up. That's yeah, a good effort. Yeah, check. Yeah, go for it. I'm still waiting. will be next the bottom of your screen you see basically it's a, a version of strokes gained against your competition yeah. 160 but yeah. I, I think it's playing mid 60s it do you not different categories Bryson Shambo below average in this category 150 to 250 Brooks Kepka elite oh, Bryson I think Brooks is waiting for a ruling Bryson's got a gap and spin this off the backstop there. Yeah. Kind of a punch shot there. Not bad. The same back at the first hole. Elsewhere, Cam Smith has tied for the lead at two under par. An electric start for the Aussie. That was his birdie at five. He is two under par. Calais Samoya has this for birdie at 12. Man from 
Finland. Blanco over to third. Comes up a little shy from 77 yards. Pat Perez for birdie at 11 said he's staying well clear of the strip this week to avoid temptation. Look out on Saturday night. Pat Perez for birdie and he is level par for the four aces. Now Taylor Gooch is our defending live golf champion. He teed off at 18 today. This was a birdie opportunity at one which he made. Hudson Swafford is a wild card. In shorts? Oh, it's Matthew Wolf. excuse me, in shorts in the chilly temperatures. That was for birdie at 13 for Matthew. Now Brooks, finally ready to play. He just wanted to check if he was able to do lift clean in place from the other fairway. And yes, you can. Yeah, it'll be a closely mown area. Well, it's pretty chilly out there at the Las Vegas Country Club, but there's some excellent golf being played in the early stages of Live Golf Las Vegas. Last week's runner-up over on the third green, or just short of it. Fourth playoff hole, his approach shot found a small patch of rough near a greenside bunker. And Neiman finished on the fringe and put it away to take the title. So meantime, we'll head to the fourth and a third shot for John Rahm. Yeah, this is definitely chippable, inable. Holable. David Fisher back in his stands, bump and run. Oh, oh how did that not break? Good try. Oh. We're back with Sergio Garcia. From the lower tier up the hill, swinging right once it gets on top and a little bit as it ascends the slope. Okay. Well, he went the other way. You know, there are a couple of ways to get to that hole. He's going up kind of a furrow there. Probably a little annoyed with the uh, the live line after Wako Neiman followed it perfectly to beat him in Yeah. Back at the Las Vegas Country Club, a property just dripping with golf history. This is the green at four. Every major golf tour has played here at one point uh, in the United States, now home to Live Golf League. Every grade of the game, too, David, to walk down memory lane has won in Las Vegas. Not necessarily here, but. Nicholas, Palmer, Trevino, Casper, on down the line. Greg Norman, of course. Yep. Basically, you look down the history of champions in Las Vegas in professional golf, and it is a who's who of the record books. And we'll be adding a new element to that record and history book with our first ever visit to the Las Vegas Valley. That looks good. good. Oh, nice. Wow. Magnificent by Brooks Kepka. He hasn't found the golf course yet, and he's under par. No. no. He's had the ball in his hand but three or four times. Smash level with the range goats on four under par, led, by, of course, by Brooks Kepka. Here's Caleb Surratt. Third at 15. A young man who was clearing out his dorm room 
at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville just a couple of weeks ago. Back to Bryson for Birdie at number four. Well, this is the flattest green out here, I think, guys. Yeah. And there's still break on this putt. <laughs> Green's rolling at a speed approaching 12. And that's today, the wettest day we're going to have from early week rains. Second green and Phil Mickelson to start his event with uh, three straight birdies. This one offline, that was for the outright lead. Yeah, There's a log jam on two under. Read that like a Russian newspaper. <laughs> Kokrak had this for birdie at 18. Neiman is back on the live line for birdie at three. Just a little. A little outside. Good putt. Normal should be okay. You know, he's got the backstop. Let's head to the sixth fairway. Tyrrell Hatton. Don, you've joined this group. Yes, I have. And my driver this week, Jason Edmondson, was the head pro here for 10 years. And he said the character that Robert De Niro played in the movie Casino, his house is right there on the left side of this fairway. He will not be cheerful about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Surratt to tie the lead, the 19-year-old. What an impact he's making on the Live Golf League circuit. He's two under par. Playing in shirt sleeves and nothing else. Well, his ex-volunteer teammates are watching. That's a nice little setup with the, uh, the phones on the table there, cheering Caleb Surratt from Puerto Rico. Volunteers Golf. He was their teammate until a few weeks ago. He turned pro in his sophomore year, having got the call from John Rahm, and he has settled in quite nicely so far. Cam Smith is second, number six. A bit of a dangler on the follow through. Oh, and that's over on the far side of the bunker, it looks like it might be buried. That's awful. Taylor Gooch for birdie at two. Playing for his third team in three seasons, started as a four ace. He was a range goat last year and traded to smash for 2024. His captain is Brooks Kepka, teeing off at five. Smash with the team lead. A little too much bat there. <laughs> See if DJ could control this a little better than his fellow competitors at six, and he has. Ideal distance. A little bit of a tug, not too bad. Rom on the tee at five. Playing 180 today. Whole location's parked just on top of that first ridge. Wind's helping in from the right. Nice crisp sign to that one. Both of them misjudging that distance, mm, or yeah. probably the wind. Sebastian Munoz at eight. Yes. Now Bryson on the tee at five. He's got nine iron. Drawing one in, curling a little too much. 
Wow. 180 yards to the hole, so he hit that about 205 with a night and iron. <laughs> Well, John Rahm got the majority of the off-season headlines, but three other notable pros joined the league, and they are excited about their new home. Well, it's lit up. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Selfishly, I'm not really a morning person, so the, uh, the late shotgun starts are always going to be a big win over for me. You know, I felt like it was going to make me such a better golfer uh, longer term, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's why ultimately I made the decision to come across and it's super exciting. I think it's super exciting. Uh, it's something different from the very first minute. You know, the team welcomed me and I felt welcome. So I'm super excited to start this new journey with the clicks. It kind of feels a little bit like your first day uh, at a new school. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Oh. Oh boy. You always know how I'm feeling. That's something I don't shy away from. Excited for what's ahead. Patrick Reed is on the tier eight of the four aces, uh, scintillating opening round in Mayakoba, but four over the rest of the way last weekend. Patton from just off the edge here at six. Looks like a fairly flat putt, but it's downhill all the way. He's an aggressive putter, this guy. I tell you, there's two players out here this year, new players, who may test uh, Cam as the best putter in the league. Patton's one of them. I think Lucas Herbert's going to be the other. Sebastian Munoz to join the group on two under par plays for Torre KGC. That was for birdie at eight. Rattles that one in confidently. Be DJ next at six. Yeah, he must have some hot blood running through his body. <laughs> Just wearing a vest. Arms are exposed. It's pretty cold. The sun's behind the clouds, and it drops three or four degrees. There's just not a lot that can really get to DJ in general, in life, in the, on golf. A little cold weather, so what? I love the walk. Yeah. The mosey. <laughs> yeah. He would win the 100-meter mosey at the Olympics <laughs> <laughs> going away. So long has been referred to as one of the best athletes in the game of golf by whatever the various definition of athletes is, just a physical ability for you know, other types of sporting activity, but he's also just the chillest human being I've ever met. From my understanding, this club has not behaved itself so far. Oh, he did hit one really ugly putt early, Dom. This has got the pace, but not the line. That's not bad, though. For the record, I think that item around his neck is called a snood. A what? A snood. OK. Yeah. That Certainly is, is where I so come from. Like I can promise you he doesn't better. call it that. <laughs> 22 and 12. 12. 12. 20 and 12. I think it's just a little bit. I like that. Right. Bryson, Bryson at five. Yeah, this is going to be a big swinging right to left putt. Very calculated with his putting and everything else. Yeah. Takes it back the same length and through the same length. That needs to travel. Cam Smith on the live line at six. This is for par. You can't yeah, get it up a... and down from that lie that oh. he was in. It wasn't a great lie. You're right, David. You had no green to work with either. Oh, OK. No. no. <laughs> that looked fine until he hit it. Now Brooks on the green at five for his birdie. Similar line to Bryson. Probably not going to swing as much from his angle. 
hung it out there. What a good try. Action happening across the golf course here in Las Vegas. Lucas Herbert was only announced as a ripper two days before Mayakoba had a solid start to his live golf career. And that has continued. That's for birdie at 10 for Lucas. Peter Uline now a range goat after the HV3 trade to the four aces for birdie at 17, looking for a big improvement on his opening weekend. He's wrapped up nice and warm, Peter Uline, and he's one under par. Anna Van Lahiri. Right. Par five first. Right. Just the two par fives here. Oh, look at that for a shot. Glorious. It was right. The green at five, Ram for birdie. Young Caleb Surratt. That was for Birdie at 16. He'll tap that in for par, I'm sure. The golf editor looks like John Rahm enjoyed celebrating his first team title as Legion 13 captain. He sure did. He came off the course a little disappointed with his bogeys at 17 and 18. That cost him an opportunity of joining Neiman and Garcia in the playoff, but his team won their inaugural event, the expansion team Legion 13. So we ended the day spraying champagne. That's Phil's second shot into the third. Third shot for Abe Anser at the par five first. The early team pylon has smash. Top of the pile, five under par. The range goes Legion 13 at Torque K, close behind a stroke back and a better start for the four aces on three under in fifth. This is the tee at seven, and Tyrrell Hatton is two under par alongside his teammate Caleb Surratt. Three scores counting to the team totals on Thursday and Friday. All four will count on Saturday, the final round. Winds died down. Hardly a breath now, but chilly. The ball's still not going to fly as far. Right. You don't want to go too far over there, and you definitely don't want to get a kick to the right. See the out of bond stakes there. Well, let's take David a look at the seventh hole from the air at the Las Vegas Country Club. Yeah, the seventh, 458 yards, one of the longer par fours on the golf course. And pretty much straight away the hole and uh, a tricky green like most of them here at the Las Vegas Country Club. DJ on the tee, and I'm hearing the American for snood is Gator. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's G -A I T E R. Yeah. And that's what DJ sporting around his neck just to stop the draft. Didn't have a, a cut in his driver last week on day one. Certainly hit a beautiful cut on the last. This one's not cutting. Ram at six. 269 to carry that fairway bunker. 
really had a, has enough firepower to carry it. It's gonna try to fade this around the corner. Perez has joined the party at the top of the pylon. He is two under par in the beanie. Rolls in a <laughs> gentle birdie put that got there eventually. Double P has had a fine start in Vegas. I just need your now Bryson on the tee at six. He's going to take on the right side tree line. That one eighty five ball speed on that. Yeah, that's his fairway finder. Mm -hmm. It's everybody else's ripper. Well, we've had a fast start in Las Vegas. Eleven players tied at two under par. And this is Bryson DeChambeau with Kenny Lofton. We had the Pro Am, the stars that showed out, many from the NFL, of course. And there's a big game this Sunday, isn't there? Right here in Las Vegas. What are they comparing warts? What's going on there? <laughs> Calluses. Kenny Lofton, decorated career in Major League Baseball in the University of Arizona Hall of Fame for basketball. Oh, yes. Speaking of halls of fame, Jerry. Yes. You're in one, aren't you? Right here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And it actually is a hall. Slugger White, our lead rules official yesterday, was over there visiting with some friends, and he actually saw it. I said, is it in a hall? He said, yeah, it's actually right on the way to the men's room. <laughs> where my picture is. We have new leaders. Harold Varner III. What a terrific start for the man who knew he needed to redeem himself after a 54th place finish in Maya Coba. He's three under after that birdie at eight. Jason Kokrak is alongside him on three under par in the early going as well. That was for birdie at one, having teed off at 16. And Phil has a birdie opportunity at three to join them on three under. Fourth green and Neyman for par. Saw Neyman yesterday really grinding on his putting. After that Friday round last week where everything was fine in the center of the hole, it wasn't so much that way on the weekend. You alluded to it in the mm -hmm. opening, David, and uh, he was really trying to grind it to get that magic in the putting stroke back. Dean Burmester is playing the ninth. He was in the lead group on Sunday in Mayakoba. He said, if you're telling me I had to shoot four under to win, I would have backed myself, but it wasn't my day. Went round in 70. He was tied third with John Rahm. That's his equal best finish in Live Golf, matching his finish in Orlando last season. Adito to two under with that almost tap in eagle at one. Now Paul Casey off the tee at 12, 191 yards in round one. Oh, that is perfect distance. Hole number six. And Brooks should be first to play. He's just playing at number three quarter nine. Three quarter nine, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Brooks hit a three-wood off his team. Shot that, right? Because it looks shorter. Shoot the six for me, and then shoot that. No, it's 160, dude. Sure? I'll shoot, shoot the, the Give six. Give me the laser. I just want to six the six one. Okay. All right, trust it. No. Sorry, I just had to do that. No, 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 I'll do that. Yeah, sometimes players just have to see the number themselves just for a visual and a confirmation to commit to the shot. 168. Pole location's on the top right shelf today behind that green side bunker. Oh, yeah, lovely 
shot. Second shot for Hatton. He is inbounds by a foot. Oh, wow, yeah. Really? Look where that white stick is. Yeah. Now he's got a shot to the right edge of the green. He can try and turn it over and get it closer to the pin. But uh, the ball well below his feet and a little bit of long grass. Not going to be easy to get spin on it. He's trying. Cam will be next. Yeah, good tee shot from Cam. Greg Norman's joined this group. Watching these three stars. Just a fraction too much. Now Ron with a second here on the sixth. Pitching wedge. Got close he stands to the ball. Yeah. Little chipper in there. Well, Pam Perez was 11 over in Mexico, good for 51st place, but he started pretty well here in Vegas. He's running hot. He teed off at nine with a bogey, but he's birded three consecutive holes. That was for birdie at 11, followed that up. Well, he's walking after them now. That was birdie at 12, and then at the par 4, 13th, rolls this one in. Yes. You look for... Pat Perez and it's working for him. Now Bryson DeChambeau is one of the Live Golf League's most interesting players. This week the Crushers captain spent some time with Sue Ann for this week's edition of Hang Time. We're here at Las Vegas Country Club for this week's Live Golf event. I am just making my way to the 10th tee to meet up with captain of Crushes GC, Bryson DeChambeau. Let's go. Well, Bryson, it's been a long off season, but you are so busy um, yeah. pumping out content for your YouTube channel. Yeah. What's your goal for that? Uh, brand awareness, growing uh, fan base of uh, hopefully not only just the Crushers and myself, but, mm. but live in general. I want people to realize who I truly am and hopefully we can provide some great entertainment and great content for people to enjoy. Well, what's the true you? Th this is, for so long I was presented as this scientist sort of person. The problem is that I have a lot more. I'm deeper than that. Yeah. And I'm very emotional, as people have seen before. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good thing. I'm passionate. I care about the game. I care about growing the game. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get from 100 million golfers to 150 million golfers. And that's, that's the goal, just growing it and creating great viral content, fun content that people can enjoy worldwide. Great stuff with Sue Ann and Bryce. And you can see the entire conversation on our Live Golf YouTube page or Live Golf Plus. So, and I know it's cold, but did you need to dress like an extra from The Revenant? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was about to head to that ski resort that's about an hour from here after that. <laughs> but yeah, Bryson. Bryson's such a great character. and uh, So much going through his mind. But the one thing I got out of that whole conversation was how much he really wants to grow this game and how passionate he is about you know, reaching a wider audience uh, for live golf and a younger audience as well, making this sport a cool game for everybody. Back to the green at six and Brooks for birdie. Ten inches of break, according to the live line on this putt from the right. It always sets that ball up off the toe of the putter and then catches it dead center every time. That did have the speed. Oh. 
events talking about Bryson wanting to reach a younger audience for Live Golf as we check in on somebody who's not the youngest player, 51-year-old Richard Brand, Bland, but the, not, the many various comments to Sunday's action, Arlo and David, uh, I read through a bunch of stuff online, articles and social media, and it was uh, so overwhelmingly satisfactory for what they got to witness on Sunday at Mayakoba. But my favorite one was a couple of guys saying, you know, I don't really, haven't quite warmed up to the team aspect yet, new viewers to it. And one guy chimed in, he goes, understand that from seasoned individuals and golfers. But he said, to me, it's about my eight and nine-year-old daughter who routinely sit through five-hour live golf broadcasts. And when last year I turned on the Open Championship, they wanted to know, where are the range goats? <laughs> <laughs> but that, I mean, that's a microcosm of yeah. growing the of truly growing the game. It sounds like lip service, a cliche sales phrase, and everybody uses it, but... Uh, there is a lot of truth to it in the Bry efforts of all these guys. Bryson has certainly embraced that, hasn't it? His crushers took out the team title in Miami last season. A band of brothers, Anaban Lahiri, Paul Casey, Charles Howe III and Bryson DeChambeau. Scott Vincent. Yeah, really good stuff there. Bit of brotherly love in Mayakoba, both Vincents. That's Kieran as well and it tied at the end of the week. And that was a par putt for Tyrrell Hatton at seven. He stays at two under par. Now Ron for a birdie here at six. Now Jerry, you know, you talked about the younger kids wanting to cheer on a team. That's the one thing I've heard the most being out here and amongst the crowd. They all say my kids are rooting for that team. My kids are rooting for this team. They want to get the merch. And it just makes golf, you know, that much more enjoyable. Just adding that team element to it. Now John, his ball should move to the left. Got a good read from Bryson's putt. Hey. Uh, not to belabor the point, but the cool thing as an adult, uh, when you root for a team, normally you're rooting for teams that uh, in a sport you just can't play. In golf, it's just the opposite. Adrian Moronk, second at 11. Voted player of the year by his fellow professionals. The Seve Ballesteros Trophy on the DP World Tour last year. Poulter to this very shallow green at number nine, converted par five. Out of the rough, out. Yeah, great shot from not a particularly good lie. Pat Perez is leading the tournament. This for his birdie at 14. That is four consecutive birdies for Pat Perez. He's in a three-way tie with HV3 and Jason Kokrak on three under par. Two four aces responding very well to disappointing performances in Mayakoba. Dustin Johnson. I don't think that was ever going to be in doubt. One bad week. Oh. Actually, he did, did quite well there, Anurban. Looked like it popped out fast on him, but it stopped quickly. Back to the 11th and Moronk for birdie. Only 26 golf courses in all of Poland. Quite an achievement for this young man to be uh, DP World. Player of the year, and that's a bit of a tweak there. From not too far away in Belgium, Thomas Peters, a range goat for birdie at 18. Yes, Thomas Peters is one off the lead. The range goats are in first place. Tied with Smash and the four aces. Tight pin towards the right side near the water. Don't think we'll see a tight pin on Saturday. Might see a more accessible one. And Brooks Kepka here on the tee at seven with a three wood. 294 to the father's left bunker. 
one of the widest fairways out here. And that should find it. Back to eight and Dustin Johnson. Yeah, just a smooth wedge. Good line. Yes, it is. The action coming thick and fast to the tee and seven. John Rahm. Well, this guy makes a very different sound when that club face meets the ball. Super dynamic, very short, very compact. Gets a club right back into the money slot. There's a lot of bonds over there. Charles Schwartz will birdie at 14 to get to two under par. <laughs> DeChambeau. Likes to draw the ball. 290 to carry that right side bunker. Trying to work it off those bunkers and this is headed a little left but should be okay a four-way tie the top of the pylon on three under par including pat perez of the four aces the range ghosts lead the way in the team contest Thinking about a reload situation there, John Rahm, but uh, they're telling him the ball is in play. Hello, Carlos Ortiz. Yeah, there'll be a few provisional balls teed up this week. Yeah. Let's head back out to our reigning individual champion, Gooch. That's for birdie at four. To tie for the lead at three under par. Your Dom mentioned earlier, all the players that he talked to are expecting something deeper than 20 under to win a three day individual event here. I think the wind uh, that they're dealing with will have a little bit to say about that perhaps, but there's a lot of short irons into these greens. Yeah. Ten players already two under par, four players three under. Burmester just a little wedge at 10. It's a little known fact that one in 24 live golfers is a Vincent brother from Zimbabwe. This is Kieran who plays for Legion 13. He was promoted from the event in Abu Dhabi in November. That was for birdie at 16. Also, here's his brother, Scott Vincent, also birdie at 16. He features for the Ironheads. They're like a pair of golden retrievers. <laughs> Peter Uline knocks one in. With him for three holes, he's made two great putts already. Thirty put an eight for Tyrrell Hatton, Dom. Yeah, he's aiming to the right. It's not breaking. That's a mystery. Oh. Oh. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> he can't believe it. <laughs> Everything breaks towards the strip. That's complete nonsense. Well, we're on the strip. And it always is. We're surrounded by it. Yes, that's true. <laughs> Kozuma at 16, one under on his round. Approach to the par five. To the green at eight, and Dustin Johnson for birdie. It looks like it's going to be Cam Smith first. 
little trivia for you, Verity and Arlo. That hotel in the backdrop in that shot, it's now called the Westgate, opened as the Las Vegas International, soon became the Hilton, where Elvis did most of his performing in Vegas. Thank when you very it, much. When it opened, you're welcome. When it opened, that was the largest hotel in the world for a decade at 2,200 rooms. Now it's not wow. even in the conversation. Yeah. I'm fill you full of useless Las Vegas knowledge this week, gentlemen. Slight bit of help playing 78. Yeah, I just think it's a perfect day. Just normal, yeah, 75, 78. A lot of conviction in that voice, Brooks Kepka. Eight iron. Hole locations tucked in the left corner of the screen. Just behind that greenside bunker. Oh. Not the worst. No, and with the uh, lift clean in place in play today, going to probably get a little better. Now, John, definitely blocked by that tree in front of him. Looks like he's going to try and swing a huge left to right cut here. It looks like a nice clean lie, so hey, it is. Over there, guys. Thank you. And he got pretty lucky that didn't go out of bounds. It was going hard right. See him hold the club face open. High left elbow on the follow through. Sit. 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 Now Bryson with a second here on seventh. What are you thinking of you, Nero? I'm thinking that. Just a 10.30. Oh, well, no, hold up. What is it? It's 45. You got 45 with yeah. the laser? Yeah. Is your 10.30 one of those 45? Yeah. I feel a little bit of help, so I'd say like 40. 10 30 if anything, just under. Yeah, a little bit of wind off our right. Bring it down on the flag or right of it, if yeah. anything. Let's go. Let's go. Well, he didn't hit a good wedge shot on the sixth. He's going to hope for a better result Perfect. here on the seventh. Gap wedge. Yep. Ball slightly yep. above yep. his feet. Let's get you caught up with some uh, highlights of Torque GC. Captain by Waco Neiman, of course, a third place finish last week. They had a three stroke lead going in to the final round. Sebastian Munoz, his third at six. They're five under par at the moment, Torque. That is good for fourth place. Waco's birdie put at two. Numa, Carlos Ortiz had a tough. First outing for Torque in Mayakoba, but it started well here in Las Vegas. That was for birdie at one. So Torque in the early stages, five under par. They're two back of the lead. Four underrated Latino golfers, Las Vegas, the Super Bowl. What could possibly go wrong? And they've started probably solidly. That's a, that's a pretty good visual there, isn't it? By the Torque social media team. And they're here to win. This is 15, Eugenio Shakara. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Back to the green at seven, or near it. Well, that's not going to be a lot of fun from there, it doesn't look like for Rom. The Live Golf League continues to improve on an amazing on-site.
fan experience. To see it for yourself in 2024, scan the QR code on the screen right now for tickets to future events. In March, we're bringing the league to Hong Kong. Can't wait for that for the very first time. And we'd love to see you there. Then in April, Live Golf will be back in Miami. And looking forward to a great week in South Florida. Get your tickets and enjoy some fast-paced golf. Scan the QR code on your screens now. We'd love to see you. This shot for Rom, so he, is he able to loft it as much as he wants, or does he have to still keep it under the tree? He still has to keep it a little under those trees. I didn't get to see the lie, but I didn't get to, I didn't see the ball, so it can't be a great lie. Yeah, it's a tough not shot. A, really. Yeah, not a lot of green to work with. Just downhill, the minute it hits that fringe, it's going to take such touch to get this close. Easy to leave this one of the shaggy stuff short of the green. Yeah, David, you definitely don't want to get too cute with this one. Yeah. Got some height on it. Yeah, had to make sure he got it to the putting surface. Mickelson back to one under par. This, however, to get it back to two. Number five for birdie. Elsewhere across the Las Vegas Country Club, Richard Bland had an ace in my Cobra in the final round. The fourth in live golf history, the 11th of his career. And his renaissance continues. At the age of 51, he's one under par. That was his third at 15. Abe Anser got it back to level par with that birdie at two. Plays for Sergio Garcia's fireballs. I love that. Now Bryson here for a birdie opportunity on seventh. It's a double breaker. to left for most of it and then left to right last five feet or so if you watch bryson on the practice screen he's got all sorts of training aids out there Eugenio Chikara on the tee at 16. 153 yards weighing in at today. And that's exactly how far he hit it. Anaban Lahiri of the Crushers, his second of three. Another player who contributed to the Crushers getting second oh. place at Mayakobo. Oh the ears off that one out of contention in my Cobra but a 67 on Sunday help the crushers into second place behind Legion 13 captained by this man John Rahm for That's part at seven got a free read from Bryson's putt let's see if he learned a little something what a yes, he did. wasn't anywhere near the golf course the entire hole and walks away with par <laughs> Marty Keimer for birdie at five, captain of the cliques. His teammate Richard Bland said, we could be the dark horses this year. And look at them creeping up the pylon again. Fourth place, four and apart. Brooks just off the edge for birdie. It's a big, big moving right to left putt. Decently slow. It's going to get through that first cut there. Blue suede shoes by any chance? <laughs> My dollars are on blue in Vegas this weekend, says Zach. Let's go smash GC. 
Caleb Surratt for birdie at the 18th. He's not feeling the temperature out there either. Graham McDowell at 12. Get back there. Bubba. This at six. Yeah. And David's goats are on top. Yeah, baby. Brooks should be first play here at eight. Crack, teammate of Brooks Kepka for Smash GC, who are in second place. But Jason is top of the pylon, four under par. What a day he's having so far. This was his birdie at three. And Jason Kokrak leads all 54 players on four under in the early stages. Bravity. Just a little breeze helping from the left. Take a look at the scoring graphic based on where T shots ended up. Our Skittles graphic seven birdies, seven pars, two bogeys, and two others. Not good on the others. The water is in play. Bryson with a gap wedge. Tried to play a little cut shot in there, just came over it. Well, it's a shootout so far in Las Vegas on day one. Jason Coe cracked four under already. The Range Goats lead the way, eight under par ahead of Smash. A few moments ago, Peter Uline for birdie at one. Uline is three under par, and the range goats, he's helped them to establish that lead over Smash. Kelly Samoya. Hanging tough today. Oh, jeweler Ben Baller was at the Pro-Am, walking inside the ropes today with Bubba and Sergio. Did you have a chat with him in the pre-round show today? Yeah, intriguing guy, huge fan base, just a celebrity in his own right. A jeweler to the stars, he's a music producer, with so many irons in the fire. Former college uh, football and basketball player as well. And a really cool guy. He brought up my coolness factor, standing next to him on the uh, Club 54 show by a, a million percent. That's an achievement. Huge. Not easy. Schwartz off the tee at 16. Stinger at the moment, way down, tied for 10th. He's doing his bit, though. Two under bar so far and a chance to get it to three.
One of our feature holes here at Live Golf Las Vegas is the par three eighth. It's a chilly morning here in Nevada, but the stand's starting to fill up. The range goes with the early lead in the team competition. Bryson DeChambeau will put first. Call in for a ruling. Nearly capacity crowd tomorrow and total capacity crowd on final round Saturday. I don't think so, but I want to, yeah, you better check. Well, not sure what's going on here, but he's got one club length. Well, it looks like he could move that almost to the edge of the green. Whilst we wait, it will happen at nine. Danny Lee is a resident of Las Vegas. He's on the tee at 16, one under par for his round so far. Oh, oh my word, that was nearly seriously unlucky. Well, Patrick Reed says it's getting quite annoying finishing in second, third, fourth and fifth every week as those around him win live golf tournaments 64 in round one in Mayakoba but fell away last week that was the birdie at 10. Paul Casey's 68 on Sunday helped the Crushers to second place that was for birdie at 13. Problems for Cam Smith at nine Dom. Yeah he hit his tee shot OB he wasn't happy obviously with hitting his tee shot OB but he walked all the way down to the ball before he was told. Oh the longest walk in golf would be back to the tee. It's got to slow down. Got That's got to slow turn. down. Oh, so we wait for Bryson on eight. John Rahm's going to play. He's going to break to his right uphill. GMAC to get smashed level with the Range Goats in the team competition. The birdie at 12 rolls that one in. The Goats and smash both eight under par. That's Sebastian Munoz over at 11. That was just a moment ago. Back live to eight and Brooks for birdie. goes to two under par. Oh, Phil going for the high flop Adopolis. Good to be played. Not a lot of green to work with there. Oh, DJ just runs out of will to find the hole at the end. Bryson. Right about this point, it's going to swing left. Scott Vincent, his second shot at 18. One of the fairy tale stories of 2023 at the Live Golf League. A magnificent performance in Jeddah that got him into the top 24 in the final regular season event. That's the long zone, and he is back for 2024. Back to Bryson cleaning up for par at eight. Thank you. 
Welcome to the Live Golf League. If you're new to this, here's the deal. 54 players, 13 teams of four, plus two wild cards at every event. Oh, goodness me! They'll play three rounds with a shotgun start, and players compete both for their team and individually. Oh, goodness me! Individual points are earned each week and add up across the season. Yeah! Finishing at or near the bottom of the standings means relegation out of the Live Golf League. In the team competition, this is where things really heat up. For the first two rounds, the top three scores count towards the team score, and all four scores count in the final round. Lowest total score wins the team showdown. Four races conquered. Team points also add up across the season, and determine seeding for an epic winner-takes-all team championship finale. They are the Live Golf team champions. This is golf, but louder. This is Live Golf. And that extra wrinkle for 2024, 13 does not go into 12, so the team finishing in last place this season will not take part in the end-of-season team championship. All right, good shot. Your body. Good job. shot out of well. the rat. Par five, number one. Somebody asked on Twitter, can't you just call him? Is his nickname Rat Sir Rat? He's not old enough to be a sir. <laughs> John Rahm on the tee. Better. Range goat in chief, Bubba Watson, second shot at seven. He's two under par for his round so far. He's scored not counting, although he is level with Matthew Wolf on two under. Thomas Peters, Peter Uline have raced down to three under par. The range goats tied for first, and that'll do nicely for Bubba. Jason Kokrak with a one-stroke lead at the top of the pylon on a low-scoring day. This smash and the goats level at eight under. Yeah. My wedges are just not good. Here is Jason Kokrak, his second shot at four. Beauty there. Harold Varner will see the late kick with the right foot here. All the way up on his toe. Nicely done. Brendan Grace putting down the hill. The pride of Pune, India, Anaban Lahiri for birdie at four. partnered with the largest streaming service in India and I'm sure folks across the country tuning in and cheering on Anaban Lahiri helps that the cricket team aren't playing today mm. 
Ian Poulter, his second shot at the 11th. Couldn't decide between hats this morning. That's a great start that looks like it's set to continue here. Kokrak on the fourth for another birdie. Slips by, stays at four under par. Bubba Watson, as you see, climbing the pylon on the left, did make his birdie at seven. So the range goes lead, smash by one. Their captain is Brooks Kepka, Suan. Where's the front? What's the front line? Front on lane's 168. And there's definitely help. Like, I mean, the pin wouldn't be moving if it was coming the other way. So there's definitely five at least to have help. Yep. Normal nine at the middle of that bunker. Yeah. So the hair out of the road. Yes. Well. Yeah. Trust it, Bruce. No wind is helping. Just to scotch. Don't want to go long with today's whole location. That'll be a very difficult bunker shot. We'll stay below this hole. HV3 for birdie at 11. Oh. If we got it from what we saw in the practice rounds, it's way more looks like it's going to hurt. If it does jump, we can't play that on this shot anyways. It's down off our right. Hit a full one. Yeah, just a normal one's good. Yep. Lie looks good for Bryson. Good shot out of the rough, potential flyer from there, down the slope at nine. Back to the Elsterman, Graham McDowell. Another fun shot at 13. About to go three under. John Rom, second shot at nine. He's got a pitching wedge. Five green, so it's very shallow. Try to draw one in here. <laughs> Caleb Surratt. This is for Eagle at one. Oh, oh man, what a good effort. Birdie for the young man. Too young to check into the hotel. Needed Tyrrell Hatton's name on his reservation, but he's doing beautifully. Yeah, Peter Tyrell. Uline to tie the lead at four under par. He's a range goat as well. Nicely wrapped up against the elements, and it's working wonders. Peter Uline, four under. The range goats lead by two. Co-leader Co-Crack on the tee at five. Oh, 
stay. 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 No. No bad, as they say in Scotland. <laughs> the Live Golf Plus app is as you know by now, filled with great content, including a fantastic series of lessons from the best players in the world. Hi, I'm Ian Poulter. Hi, I'm Bryson DeChambeau, captain of Crusher's GC. This is Cam Smith, and welcome, welcome to, to my live lesson. lesson. So here we go. Yeah. All right, everybody, so the most important thing when learning how to accumulate power and distance is gonna be the fact you gotta just be a little psycho. I mean, Bryson hits it such a long way. You gotta swing as hard as you can, but, but don't give it the energy like you're swinging it fast. You gotta be applying a lot of force to the golf club. Testing, practicing, skills of bunker play in general is very much experimental. Ian Poulter for the Majestics. I love to hit different bunker shots. I like to watch people play bunker shots because I'm always learning. Ah, it's in an awkward spot. What a good shot that is. I basically want my weight to go through the balls of my feet and these arms just hanging down, literally just attaching to the grip. Possibly the best putter alive. And they're sitting in the hole every time. I haven't missed one yet. He put on an absolute clinic. Well, in addition to live lessons, you can enjoy live golf league tournament action, another round with Faultsy and What the Fairty or WTF. Download the app now, it's free, and those master classes are currently live on the Live Plus app. Brooks for birdie at nine. Just a little earlier on the Live line, never had the speed. Now live with John Rahm for birdie. It's right to left for Rahm for most of this putt. It's just gonna straighten out a touch. Last feet or so, two feet. He's going to move to his right. Brad McDowell for another birdie here at 13. That's yeah. never going to miss on that line. Great start for G-Mac, three under par, one back of our leaders, and smash nine under, one back of the range goes. Nice shot. Nice shot. I'd say, yeah. Well, Bryson has had a, a look. Yeah, they did a very here. similar line. To rum putt, rum, John Rum's putt. Excuse me, <laughs> air bubble there. It's cold out there. <laughs> it is cold. It should straighten out at the end here. Sergio out of eight has this for birdie. Lahiri on the tee at the pit. Brooks made his par at nine. Likes that one. That will be why. Tyrrell Hatton for birdie at 10. This is Bubba Watson to say par at 8. Range Goats will slip into a tie for first place on nine under par with Smash. A Range Goat Peter Uline and a Smash GC player Jason Kokrak lead the individual event.
Cook did tap in that short one after the beautiful shot from the left rough at 14. Now Dustin Johnson Gator at all around the neck trying to stay warm on the tee at 11. Well the sun's come back out so it is a little bit warmer. DJ needs to see a couple of putts drop. He just had another good opportunity on the 10th green and pulled it again. It seems to be the problem today. Playing into the wind just slightly though. It's a five mile an hour wind's not going to really affect these guys, but he's got his cut back. That's nice to see off the tee. He likes that one, Dom. Yeah, pick the tee off the ground pretty quickly. It's on the fairway. Elsewhere, Paul Casey, third shot at 15 on the bunker. Beautifully done by Paul Casey at the par five. So a birdie opportunity there. David Bush gets it to one under for his round so far with that birdie at four. Oh, beautiful. Where are we here, Jerry? That is the Spring Mountains up in, Sp in the Spring Mountains is the Mount Charleston area, the Spring Mountain Range, also Lee Canyon Ski Resort. Jason Kokrak teed off at 16. He's four under so far. This is for birdie at six. John Rahm can find the fairway at 10. 284 to that left side bunker. Ended up right at the 10. Uh, maybe right, Rob. Yeah. Exactly. Bryson next on the tee. It's got a little wind coming off our left, supporting these flags over here. Not much, though. You heard Jibo, his caddy. Just a breath of wind. Not too much, though. Going to draw this along the right tree line. Bangles up. Send that out. Marco Neiman is coming off an absolutely wild first weekend win that included a record round, a two-stroke penalty, and a playoff. Here's a look back. I was feeling confident. I was feeling good on the golf course. Just wanted to go out there and enjoy my Yakoa because I know it's a tricky course. Marco Neiman has an opportunity to tie the lead, and he takes it. I was feeling great. Let's get out to the 11th and Waco Neiman. He catches the ball in the middle. Oh, oh. That hole, I think, gave me more of an attitude to keep going. He's now nine under. Yeah, I keep swinging free. Look at the look in that man's eyes right there. Total focus, Dom. He's 12 under par. Today, I mean, it's got to be a Joaquin, right? Possibly another round of the 50s. 59 for the Chilean. Oh, the big beaming smile. 59? Yeah! Did not see that happening, let's just say that. Wako Neiman with that scintillating 59 on Friday. He went to sleep last night thinking he had a four-shot lead. That lead is only two. Well, he took an incorrect drop from an obstruction. And they showed me the video and it was like, yeah, it was, it was clear and I, I mean, it was a mistake. He has, you know, the time to settle himself, Don. Yeah. He'll be fired up. To think about it, that I just gotta go out there and fight and grind, and I knew it was gonna be a long day. That's a great response from Marco Neiman because the pressure must be so intense on the young man right now. I'm still in a good position, I still can win the tournament. I mean, the roller coaster of emotion that he's experienced over the past three days. Yeah. We went to a playoff with Sergio. Marco Neiman to win. And since I was reading my putter, I knew I had to make that putt, I knew I had to make this putt. It was great, it was great. <laughs>
and he wins his first Live Golf title in the most dramatic circumstances possible. It really was incredible. It was virtual darkness. The fourth playoff hole, the crowd were chanting one more hole. The two of them decided to march back to the 18th tee and play it a fourth time. And it was a birdie, as you saw there, from Waco Neiman to take his first Live Golf title. The 13th individual to win on the Live Golf circuit. Here's Anaban Lahiri. That was for birdie at five to get to three under par a few moments ago. Harold Varner over at the 12th for birdie from a long range. One shy. Brooks Kepka, second here on 10th. Good light. That lip shouldn't be an issue. He's got about 152 to the front from where he is. A little downwind. Today's hole location's tucked behind that left sure. side bunker. These guys are so good at just picking that ball off the surface of the sand. Well, look out, golf world. A star is being born here in the Live Golf League. Caleb Surat, 19 years of age, a star for Legion 13 when they won their inaugural tournament in Maya Coba, and he is tied for the lead on four so, under par here in Las Vegas. You got another six behind it too, so soft green. Yeah. 29, I think you, uh, that lie, you're hitting a low to mid 20 shot. I think it's absolutely perfect. Really, that low? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I just feel like if there's a little bit of help and if it comes out loose at all, I mean, depending on how you, well, now that wins. That's what it's supposed to be. I think you've never heard right. of 125. Okay. Okay. It's got to be just left to right. Yes, it is. John's got a perfect angle into today's hole location from this right side of the fairway. Just in that first cut. Shouldn't be an issue. Sandy might not want to mention to him that he's four back of his 19 year old rookie teammate. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Surratt, how about that? Uh -huh. Contraries every time, Robert. Sebastian Munoz at 13. Here he flies in the can. Back to Bryson at 10. Count back to Sunday, Caleb Surat has birdied nine of his last 13 holes. <laughs> yeah. Extraordinary performance by the young man. Here's Cameron Smith, his second at 11. I think there was a reason Surratt was handpicked to be <laughs> on that Legion team. As his coach said, wasn't upset at all because most kids go to college to get good job offers and he got the best one he could imagine. Yeah. Carlos Ortiz, on the fourth green, this was earlier, gets to the front door and falls in drunk. <laughs> now 2024 promises to be the most exciting year yet for the Live Golf League. New players, a new team and fantastic new venues. Live Golf Fantasy is back with an exciting format that offers multiple ways to win. Pick your team, then compete against friends, foes and family from around the world. Watch your team climb the pylon and win great prizes. And more importantly, of course, bragging rights. It's fantasy, but louder. And it's another great way to enjoy the Live Golf League. Waco Neiman. Hello, Neiman. Yeah, I feel a little bit more wind there, Blake. 43. Right. Just wonder if the conditions are a little bright for him today. 
future is. Certainly. And interesting, when he spoke to Dom, there was a real insight as to where he's at psychologically. He mentioned majors straight away, Jerry, didn't he? He just beat an incredible field of golf and intense competition, world-class effort. And uh, one thing was on his mind are the four most coveted titles in the game and getting a chance, just a chance to play. Brooks, long, long range at 10. a little right on him. Paul Casey for birdie at 16. And Paul gets to three under par, one back of our co-leaders, Surat and Kokrak. Uh, Cam, a little downhill for birdie. Best of the three approach shots from around 100 yards. All actually, all three were pretty average approaches. And no one can make a putt here. Rob at 10 for birdie. Didn't probably learn too much from Kepka's lengthy one. Maybe just a little bit as it lost speed and died to the right. See Paul Casey, three under par, one back of our leaders. That's because he's birded four of his last five holes. Crush's teammate, Anabad, yeah. Yeah, his second at the sixth. Back to 10 and Bryson for birdie. Yeah, me too. Yep. in a chilly Nevada nine to play on day one of live golf Las Vegas Well, the halfway stage on the first day here in Las Vegas and the golf has been wildly entertaining so far with the backdrop of the Las Vegas Strip. There's a sphere on the left hand side as well. The Las Vegas Country Club is a host venue for three days of exhilarating golfing action. Your announced team, myself, Arlo White, Jerry Foltz, David Ferti in the booth, Don Boulay and Suan Heng are braving the chill out there. Not typical desert weather, although I'm told not too unusual at this time of the year, but how about 46 Fahrenheit? It's a day for snoods or gators. <laughs> Mostly cloudy out there. 
but the golf action has been red hot. And how about Caleb Surratt? What a magnificent performance by this young man, 19 years of age. He's only just turned pro two weeks ago, the former University of Tennessee man, and he has the joint lead on four under par at this stage as well, and he's contributing to Legion 13, of course. Let's bring in our course analysts on the ground who are nicely wrapped up against the elements today. Sue Ann Heng, what has caught your eye so far? Las Vegas is known for its championship boxing events. Well, the heavyweight champions that I'm following today are off to a bit of a slow start, but it, their consistency time and time and again have shown exactly why they are champions. So it won't surprise me if they start narrowing the gap as we head into the back nine. Well, you know, the wind has died a lot and the, you know, the conditions are actually quite nice. It's a little bit warmer, but the scoring is not actually as good as I expected. But I think one of the reasons for that is you have to find the fairway so you can clean your ball. If you miss the fairway and you can't clean your ball, there's a lot of mud on the ball and you have obviously got to struggle to get it close to the green to give yourself birdie opportunities. And David, when you are one of those heavyweights that Sue Ann mentioned and you're out there and you see I mean, there are, the scores aren't as low, maybe at the top of the leaderboard, but in general, yeah. they're extremely low and you're not really clicking on all cylinders. What are you telling yourself? Well, you, you, you've just got to keep going lower. I'm, I, I'm like you. I'm a little surprised that there isn't somebody five, six, seven under par. You know, it's a short golf course, um, but they are having difficulty hitting the fairways. And then when you get it in the rough, you've got to hit it left to right or right to left. Yeah, it's difficult to do from from these lies. Yeah. And it's a top of the show, Sue Ann, you had mentioned that uh, the greens are, you know, decent size in general, but really small targets. Are you finding that the guys are just having a little difficulty judging the wind, getting that precision into the greens that they need? Yeah, I spoke to Ricky Elliott on one of the fairways walking up, and he said the wind is just so difficult to read at the moment. They're really struggling to find uh, a consistent wind direction. Uh, but, you know, you have to hit the fairways here, as Dom has mentioned, for the lift clean in place as an advantage. But also, yeah, if you don't hit it in the right sections on these greens, it's going to put so much pressure on your flat stick, try to make those long range, big breaking putts. It's just no fun. David, and we're, I mean, we're watching Caleb Surratt. He, he promises to be a pretty special player. He was a special amateur. What were you doing at 19? Were you trying to be the best in the world? Yeah, I was trying to, you know, get to the pro shop in time to open it, you know, <laughs> after the paper run that I did, um, you know, in, in the morning. And then I was a bartender at night, you know. So, no, this is like this would have been unfamiliar territory for me. And, Dom, I know you're not following him, but you also played professional golf from a young age. Can you comprehend the, the mountain that guy is trying to scale at such a young age and the optimism and game that it'll take to do it? No, I really can't, Jerry, because, I mean, you imagine when he walks onto a range, I mean, this is his second week as a pro, and he's got Dustin to his left, Brooks to his right, Bryson further down, Sergio. I mean, I would have been so nervous. I would have felt so out of place. I, I don't think I could have played any good golf at all, but clearly he's a special talent because that obviously it does not bother him whatsoever. Let's take a look at uh, some of Caleb Surratt's highlights. Then he teed off at 13, one of the stars of the show for Legion 13 on Sunday when he birded his final five holes after a, a triple bogey at 17. That was his third shot at 14. And then for birdie at 15, he's not put off by the chill weather, wearing his short sleeves all day today. This is for birdie at two as well. So Caleb Surratt of Legion 13 helping his team and also our joint leader on four under par. The 18th green is behind us. And it just, we can't say enough about this young man who a lot of the golf world didn't know anything about. If you study collegiate golf in the United States, you know exactly who Caleb Surratt is. But we're seeing him emerge in front of our very eyes here, and he's showing that not only has he got the game for it, but he's got the temperament for it as well. Oh, the temperament, absolutely. You know, you saw after the triple bogey on Sunday uh, last week, he comes up with five birdies. And, uh, you know, the thing that impresses me most about him, Jerry, is his putting stroke. Yeah. It's clockwork. It just looks beautiful on the on the greens. Well, his coach at the University of Tennessee, Tennessee Brennan Webb, said that actually is the, if there is a weakness in his game, it's on and around the greens he's working on it very very hard even John Romney flew out to Phoenix to work with John and he couldn't wait to get back to Tennessee to show his coach and his teammates the the little shots that John Rom had showed him around the green but what impresses me the most is he said it yesterday in
in a press conference and you hear from so many young players I want to be number one I want to be the best in the world the famous interview with Tiger Woods and Curtis Strange when Tiger said the same thing and the old guard said you know second place isn't too bad was fam uh, was Curtis's famous quote Tiger was a special player and he is the role model by which all these young players now strive to attain such greatness and they you know he said it might sound a little cocky to say I want to be the best I want to compete against these guys I want to learn how to win out here but he said that's how you have to think and that's what you got to believe and he's uh, doing it at least thus far in his fourth round of professional golf Ian two hats Polter at 13 <laughs> The double helmet. <laughs> yeah, play this in off the left. See the palm trees over there. Yeah, they're, over there, they're kind of bouncing back into the right. That, those ones are the left too. So. Yeah, exactly. So in off the left, and we have. I mean, not saying we got to play this, but mm. let's give ourselves sort of. I like pitching this obviously a few past. Like a full 45. Yeah. I like still flying something. Dude, you like pitching wedge then? Yeah. Ten o'clock pitching wedge. Yeah. I mean, it would be potentially more than that, anything, right? Yeah, but they got 145. They got 145 as your 10 o'clock pitch. We have 148. Yeah. We have 148. We're trying to pitch it a couple pass, and it's hurting. Well, this isn't going to spin that much. I agree. Okay. So that's where I'll just play it with the wind. I want to land it on it. Okay. So when we're trying to land it 148, yep. play it in a few of her, right? Yeah, 150. So just over. Yeah. The wind just picked up a little bit more in the last 20 seconds or so. You heard him, it's not going to spin that much, but he's playing for that bit of backstop there. I can see the number. And? Hold on. Paul Casey at 17, his second shot. Jinxed him completely. Caleb's are out. That was for par. Yeah, yeah, we're putting some pressure on him along with everybody else. Yeah. It's the first one we've seen him miss. Rom, first cut left rough at 11. And shouldn't do much to it. The left to right will hurt it. You know, Jerry, I think if I went up to him and said, Caleb is. Uh, Ahead of you by four. I think he'd be such a proud captain. He speaks so highly of Caleb and his maturity. Exactly why he deserves a spot on John's team. And John, he's got the ball way back in his stance. Yeah, good shot there. Yeah. DJ for birdie at 12 said he was surprised at how high he finished in Mayakoba at the weekend. Expected a little more rust, got himself into contention on Sunday. Elsewhere, well, the Range Goats are leading the way in the team competition on nine under par. Matthew Wolf traded, of course, from Smash GC in the off season. This was for Eagle at one, so Matthew would make birdie at one. Taylor Gooch, who went the other way, range goes to smash for birdie at eight, and that drops in. Taylor Gooch is two under par for his day so far. Here's the head goat. Bubba at number 10. Beautiful little wedge shot. The green at 12, Dom watching Cam for par. having an uncharacteristic day. He's been out of bounds. He's missed some putts that he would normally make. Who would you join at the craps table, given a choice? Scan the QR code and <laughs> have a vote. 
and it's a landslide for Pat Perez. <laughs> 56 percent is going up as we speak as people join it and they'll uh, update this poll we'd love you to get involved on the club 54 post round show a little later on but pat perez you're gonna have to wait till saturday to see him at the graps table or anywhere close to it he's staying off the strip this week so he can focus fully on live golf Las Vegas. Well, there's plenty of, of craps tables and gambling not on the strip as well, just so you know, Arlo. Basically, everywhere you go in Nevada and Las Vegas, your local grocery store will have slot machines on the way out. The baggage carousel as well, I noticed the yeah. other day. Is that Bryson? told me in hang time, which you can catch on the Lift Golf Plus app, that he likes to putt past the hole by about 2 feet 11 inches. No more, no less. That's a lot, actually. I yeah, know. It is. Yeah. The uh, scientific research done long before Bryson started approaching it scientifically always said about 17 inches was a perfect holding speed for a putt. Well, I think he'll be surprised that he's uh, only four back. It's getting louder on the eighth tee. Henrik Stenson. First look at Henrik today. Two over for his round so far. The Majestic's four under par. Down in seventh place. That's beautifully done by Henrik. Hasn't stopped yet. Chance to get it back to one over. We're saving the hole in one for Saturday, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is all scripted. <laughs> Brooks at 11. 8, got 10 good, footer. Yeah, got a good look here for Brooks. This is certainly the flattest part of the screen. Not too much break. Thomas Peters over at the fifth. Little curly right to lefter. Didn't curl quite enough. That was to tie the lead for Thomas Peters. And another man with an opportunity to do so is Paul Casey. For birdie at 17 a few moments ago. Ooh, two chances missed in quick succession. Rom for birdie. He should move just a hair to his left. Wow, it went right. Mm. Well, Live Golf has launched the league's first podcast it's creatively called fairway to heaven and it's hosted by jerry Foltz and sue ann heng but the stars of the show of course are the live golf league players yeah i think johnny's gonna bring a lot to the to to the team even i think obviously we've seen how how good he plays on rider cups and how good he is of a of a team player and like in almost every other country except from the US, we, we are born playing team events for our countries. Mm -hmm. And John is one of those who, who grew up playing from Spain and who grew up playing for teammates. So I think we understand better how, how important is the team aspect and we didn't have this opportunity in professional golf. So I think it's, it's going to be huge to have John uh, as a captain, as a team leader, and it will be also nice to, to play against him. I think he's one of the best players I, I ever seen. I mean, it would be nice just to, to, to play a golf tournament and, and try to beat him. So I think it's nice to have him on the, on the same field. Well, if you've yet to sign up for Live Golf Plus, you're missing out on something quite special. Download the app from the App Store, just like you would Netflix or Max. But unlike those, Live Golf Plus is free. That's right, absolutely free. Latest episode, is it up yet? 
Jerry. I know you've uh, recorded the two uh, of you, uh, one here uh, at Las Vegas. Yep, I got the sound bites to uh, promote just about an hour ago, so I uh, believe it is fully up. And that was with Kevin Na. And fittingly. <laughs> very, very good stuff out of Kevin. Love being able to, you know, peel back the layers and let the people, the fans and the people and and what have you know what these people are truly all about inside, what makes them tick. Look at McDool go. <laughs> GMAC flying on day one, three under par, smash on nine under, level with the range goats for the lead. I'd rather take something from this back friends than this over here. Yep. Anyways, land at five short, you said? Yep. All right, so it's 190. It's northwest, so it's off our left. Right, so in the last, in this one, around 11, northwest, one, two, three. Yep. Same angle. I still like, I like flighting something. I know you're trying to get a feel with it, but I still like, you know, a 10, 10, 30 shot. Like a full. Okay. Okay. Play yeah, I like that. I was walking up with Bryson and I overheard a conversation he had with his caddy, Jibo. He said, ah, oh, Jibo, been making so many good putts today, none of them are going in. They were frustrated. That's show business for you. Yeah, playing 191 today, whole locations on that top left deck. Of this green. Gonna try and bring all the Vegas puns into the commentary today. <laughs> and this is a good looking shot. Just a second ago, Bubba Watson for birdie at 10. Yes, Bubba, one of nine players on three under par, one behind our solo leader now, Jason Kokrak. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Sue Ann. Sorry, Jerry. John next on the tee. Wynn just picked up a hair. It's hurting a little bit, but mainly off the left. Oh. Wow, that was a big miss hit. Whoa. Yeah, that was a clank. That was near the hosel. Mm. Barner at 14, his second. Brooks, last to hit on this tee, six iron. This two looks pretty good. Let's get you caught up with a couple of characters we haven't seen a great deal of so far today. A pretty loud eighth tee, Brandon Grace is one under par for his round for Stinger GC. Pretty happy with that. Meanwhile, over on the 15th from the bunker, third shot for Mark Leishman. And a birdie for the Ripper GC man there. Terrell Hatton, his second at 13 a moment ago. Yeah, just from 95 yards. Easy. Good shot. <laughs> Second and 18 for Lucas Herbert. And the 18th green, not really one that you want to be approaching from the rough. Tied for 21st in Mike Herbert, his first live golf event, which was a pretty solid outing for a man who was only announced as a member of Gripper GC 
two days before replacing the relegating Jed Morgan for the All Aussie team. And here's his captain, Cam Smith, his second shot to 13. Only man to hit a driver off the tee. Well, a little bit higher than I thought. I thought he might skip one in. Here's Dickie B. Richard Bland. He's got a one under. Stay that way. I didn't need it really. <laughs> As our drone, Alf, as David calls him, gives us a nice view of the 12th green. Rom will be first after the clanky tee shot. See land middle of the bunker, though. Yeah. Wow, that was a big miss hit from him. Haven't seen a shot from him like that since he joined us. Now a lot of green to work with here. He's probably looking to fly this all the way to the top. Oh, nice. Nice pebble. It's kind nice of offline. Pebble. Nice pebble, he says. He drew six yards out, 20 fucking yards of the bunker. Oh, speaking of Alf, causing havoc behind the scenes here in the Live Golf broadcast area. That's where all the dog blinks are produced. That's where Live Studios live during our events here, producing those magnificent films from all of our events. Everyone on their best behaviour there. I'm yeah. sure that's not the scene normally. Some of those people are awake. <laughs> Alf would be well suited to stay out of the booth, though. It didn't end well last time. Swatted out of the air, wasn't he, by David? Mm. The sun peeks out from behind the clouds for a little while. Brooks for birdie. to left on it. Yeah, I, yeah, it's close to that, but yeah. Trust it. Overread that one. <laughs> well, this was Jason Kokrak, who's had a terrific day so far. He got it to four under par. This was for par, though, at seven. Oh. That lips out. He goes back to three under par. But Harold Varner, the third, to take the lead on four under par himself just a few moments ago. That was for birdie at 14. So Harold Varner said, he was desperate to redeem himself after a poor showing in Mayako, but now a 4 ace, of course, and he's certainly doing that. He's our leader. It's for par at 12 for John Rahm. Big three there after core tee shot and not a particularly good bunker shot either. That putter can make up for all of that. Rahm's teammate Tyrrell Hatton for birdie at 13. Oh, what? Say it isn't so. <laughs> Cracks me up. Bleep. Bleep, bleepity bleep. Bleepity bleep bleep. Bryson for birdie at 12. Got a good read from Brooks's putt. Depending on the speed, he's choosing to putt this. It should not move very much at all. Probably just inside right. I knew 
think it was left to you, but I'll, you know, I, told, I mean, I knew it broke over. Uh. Harold Varner has been joined at the top of the pylon. Paul Casey in the bunker. What a 13. Oh, tough little bunker shot, just beautifully played. Excuse me, that was 80. Yeah, and he's four and a par. This is Graham McDowell. On the TV, that, that shot Paul Casey just hit, it happened right behind our stop booth here. I was watching it live. He played it really, really quickly. Didn't think about it. He was waiting for uh, one of his fellow competitors to make their way to the green and just hit it. Bucket. Cam now for birdie. That's more like it. Jason Kokrak has just given up the lead. All close to the hole there belongs to Abraham Anser. And this is how he got it there. His captain, Sergio Garcia, second shot at 11. Just a look at the 13th and you see just how close the property line is on the left. And water right. And driving. Brooks above average. John Rahm, one of the best in the entire game. Elites and Bryson Chambeau. Not quite to the elite level, although I think he would argue that. Just a driving iron for Bryson. It's 270 to the bunker on the right. Bubba Watson teed off at one in one of the feature groups today, and he's tied for the lead. The range goes captain for Bernie at 11, and Bubba has it at four under par alongside Harold Varner the third and Paul Casey. Back to Rahm at 30. Fairway wood for John. Probably just trying to play this short of the far bunker. It's about 318 to reach it. Wind off the right. Just whips that club head through. Adrian Morocco. 17th hole, his second shot, short iron. He said the last few weeks have been quite stressful. Apparently he was stuck in San Diego preparing for his first PGA Tour event, and then suddenly he was going to Mexico yeah. to play his first live golf event. A whirlwind few weeks for Adrian Moron. Brooks Kepka tees it off at 13. So Harold Varner the third, Bubba Watson, Paul Case here, our three leaders, seven to play on day one in Las Vegas. Here's Anurban over on the eighth green for birdie. Have this to tie the lead. Big 
McDowell for yet another. Oh, oh, do, do. Lots. The blip outs today, really sharp edges on those holes. Yeah. Well, let's get you caught up with Team Tor KGC. Three under par for the tournament so far. They won four times last year and got to the final four in Miami as well. Munoz with his third to the sixth. You just saw that as Waco Neiman's birdie at the second. Carlos Ortiz, who came over from the Fireballs, uh, had a birdie at the first. So Torque are three under par, but not threatening the leaders at the moment. They're down in ninth place. This is Waco Neiman, captain. That's for birdie earlier, getting him back to even par. But a disappointing Sunday at Mayakoba for the team. And that was unexpected for Torque. They had a three-stroke lead. It was five before the two-stroke penalty for Waco Neiman. All four scores counted, of course. But Legion 13 went 14 under par collectively on the final day. And Torque eventually had to settle for third place. But it is another podium finish. This is the eighth green. And Jason Kokrak with... Uh, a lengthy birdie opportunity to get it back to four under par. We had that dead online. I mean, we're just on the kind of shot. Okay. Like when 16 land. Okay. Downwind three. You got a. 50? Yeah, you're looking at around 10 o'clock with one of those. Yeah. Yeah. We got that at 115. So if you want to land it, would you say we had? What's it 10 o'clock 50? 10 o'clock 50 is 115. Just under 10. Yeah. Off our right still, we could be aggressive with the line too. Wind coming off that four o'clock, so helping and just a touch from the right. Whole locations all the way back right. Pretty flat back here. Can probably fly this all the way to the pin. It's a lot of clocks for a town that doesn't have them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ever. I saw the halfway up in the air. Oh my god. There is a hell back. Yeah. Brooks kept that next to hit. It's worked really hard on the physical stuff in the off season. He's always a fit man, but he certainly is a fitter version of him. We saw him in Mayakoba. Got a new training program in place. Well, Bubba Watson. Coming off a birdie that's got him into a three-way tie for the lead. Here he is on the tier 12. Go! Go hard! Yeah. He's looking for a kick to the right there. He's pushed it a touch. John now, the second. Here on the 13th. Tight second in greens and regulation last week. He's really put on a clinic for us. This should be his... Striking zone right now. Two, two. Other bounces, I expected more. Well, this offseason saw a flurry of player movement and transactions. Our cameras were with Bubba Watson right after he and his front office made the move to obtain Matthew Wolf. Everybody's excited. That's what everybody wants to do. That's what, what impressed everybody about live and coming here so they can be a team. And it goes back to high school days, goes back to college golf. You dream about being a GM or a franchise owner and then you start doing it. As you know, me and you've had many hours of late night conversations trying to work this out. And then when Taylor said to me about the 10 year process, that's what got us thinking about, hold on, he said 10 year process. Well, why wouldn't we go get this 24 year old that's on top of the world in the same headlines of Victor Hovland and Morikawa. Yeah. 
I mean, that's a that's a big piece. I think that man is good, and he's he's young. There's movement. There's trades. There's new people coming in, just like other sports. There's new, old. Uh, there's people switching teams. That's the thing about a small roster, right? You only got four people. People call you Matt, Matthew, Wolf, Wolfie. Like, I said it like I want the team to get off on the right foot here. So what did you want? And he told me essentially like his mom calls him Matthew. Matt's fine, but Wolfie is what mo is probably the most common. So yeah. he, just so you know, he's giving me permission to call him Wolfie. Now. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Range Goats' uh, progress here. Of course, Matthew Wolf and Peter Uline recruited out went HV3 and our individual champion, Taylor Gooch, which caused a few eyebrows to be raised, but they're having a terrific day at the moment. Wolfie, three under. Captain, four under. Peter Uline, two under. Not counting. Thomas Peters is three under par as well. There it is. And Wolfie. Is it a tie for the lead with his captain as well? And Paul Casey and Harold Varner the third on four under par. The Goats lead by three. Rom sizing up his birdie putt at 13. teases you the whole way. Terrell Hatton. At 14. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Ooh. Nice shot. Adrian Moronk for birdie at 17. Gets what would have got him to four under, but he is three under par, and the cliques are six under in fourth place. After Hatton, DJ played his second at 14. Get in there, get in there. Go! Oh. 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 Wow. Breaking news, he would make that. Mm. Yes. Shocker. Bryson. Yes. Taylor Gooch, second shot at 11, two under par and an excellent start for the man who just aims for 67 every round. Won three times in the Live Golf League last season and pipped Cam Smith over the last two events to take the title as Live Golf League champion. is on simmer, I think, at yes. the moment. Yeah. That was Brooks at 13 for birdie. Carlos Ortiz has reached the eighth tee.
downhill line. Delicate one for Bubba at 12. Had higher hopes for it than that, but that is not going to hurt him. The 14th hole at the Las Vegas Country Club, David. Yeah, 14 at 471 yards. It's a tough one. You gotta fiddle it in between these two bunkers here, but these guys can fly them. And up to this grainy, tricky green. <laughs> and Bryson is on the tee. I'm not necessarily trying to cover the right one, but it's 310. Yeah. Oh, you're good. Should be able to cover it, though. Yes. Well, the wind has died down the last five minutes. It's 302 to that bunker on the right. We try and draw it off that line. There's no problem for this silverback of a man. They're fluid. Harold Varner the third for birdie at 15. to take a one-stroke lead, the man who won in D.C. last year. Rom should have no problem flying that bunker either on the right. Nope. Just hits the ball differently, doesn't he? Better swing there. Just with... Craig on the golf course last week noticed that sometimes John Rahm just doesn't quite complete his shoulder turn with his right shoulder. And he loses that one to the left. Takes a pretty well-trained eye to see that because the swing is so fast and short to begin with. Now yeah. Brooks with fairway wood. It's right in between the bunkers, perfect. The Pro-Am the other day was an entertaining affair. There's Brooks with Dexter Fowler. Go Cubbies! Had a lead-off home run in Game 7 when the Cubs won the World Series a few years ago. And Arlo, when they won that World Series, how long was the streak? Was it over 100 years? Oh, it's, it was 105, something yeah. in that region. That was cool. Apologies to the Cleveland Indians fans tuning in, of course. It's been quite a while for them, too. Burmester. Didn't expect him to struggle a little bit here in round one. Ten players over par in the field of 54. Bubba for par at 12. I'd already given this one to him. He mentioned to Sue Ann, for him, it's all about the putting. And yeah. that's right in the middle. But, uh, in the middle, the statistics show the closer Bubba gets to the green, the harder it is for him through last year. The Range Goats are in first place to the delight of David Fairty in the Goat Legions. That was for 30 at six for Bubba Watson. Matthew Wolf hitting his stride as a Range Goat. That was for Birdie at 13. He's tied for the individual lead with Bubba as well. Thomas Peters is showing well. He's one off the individual lead. That was for Birdie at one. And Peter Uli going great guns as well. All four range goats excelling on day one in Las Vegas. That was Uline's Birdie at 17. They lead by three. The unusual putting style of Janichiro Kazuma with that ball and club head well outside his eye line. Paul Casey for Eagle at one, finished fourth in our season opening event in Mayakoba last year, but struggled with injury for most of the year. Part, of course, of the team championship winning crushers. And he's tied for the lead in the early stages here.
the 14th fairway. The sun is out. Don't be fooled. It's rather chilly out there. Range goes lead by three. And I think Brooks Kepka is the first to play. Well, you guys mentioned Ben Baller earlier. Him and Brooks did a thing on social media during their pro-am round. And uh, Brooks said to him to prepare five rings this season for him. One for him and four for the smash team so you know where his head is at so he wants that individual ground doesn't he yeah he came so close nine, last season yeah no. yeah it's one one it's only one six eight cover on line okay i don't i don't actually honestly no, don't think it's that bigger one yeah neither do I. and if anything it's slightly out of the right but there's not a pile in it you got a hair down slope i think it's with. 65 shot man yeah Wind is helping. Today's whole location is in a bit of a swell on this left side of the screen. Paul Casey made that birdie putt and he is in the lead on five under par. Richard Bland, after his ace in Mayakoba at the weekend, this is his second shot at four. He said his caddy threw him under the bus when the ball went into the hole. He said, you just want a car. And he was <laughs> looking around for the car, and his caddy was joking. That's not funny. It's not funny. I don't think mm. Blandy saw the uh, funny side of that. His caddy did. <laughs> Rom, see if he can dial one in. Pitching wedge. Should be able to. Accessible hole location. Go. Go a little bit. You got a lot of slope right of the hole too that we're bringing to it. Yeah, I like that. Stay for Bryson. Coming out of the rough, but a better angle for Bryson. Well, the Live Golf League has boosted your Live X experience. At select events, you, the fan, will have the opportunity to choose which captains are grouped together for the first round. This week, you picked Brooks, Bryson, and John Rahm. Pretty good choice. We're also enhancing uh, your on site fan experience with exclusive meet and greets with players, inside the ropes opportunities, and free VIP upgrades in your bucket list cities. Just sign up to Live X. It's easy and it's free. HB3 at 16. No leaning. Good sign. Very good. Good. To the green of four. And Matthew Wolf with an opportunity to tie the lead with Paul Casey. Graphic at the bottom shows you well below Matthew Wolf's own expectations of himself and certainly well below his potential. Just seven top 10 finishes in 21 events. Same age as Waco Neiman. Yeah, I think he's going to have a great year. Yeah. He's in a place where he's going to be more comfortable. Ah, I am corrected, Scrappy says uh, in response to your on air question, Jerry. It took 108 years for my beloved cubbies. Hmm. It's a long wait. And Dustin leaning off that one like he left it a little right. Not too bad. It's the par five, 15. Brooks with his third at 14. Lies good. He's going to try and bump this into the bank. Oh. 
soft bounce there, and that'll come back a little. Thomas Peters on the tier eight for the leading range goats. showing by the range goats who came down in 11th two over par collectively in Mexico a dramatic improvement for them here in Las Vegas rock for birdie at 18 but still playing nicely through what uh, 12 holes John Rahm the only captain in this group that has his score counting today would not have thought that the start of today is to try and get into the red numbers. Yes. Yeah, he was over two. John Rahm gets one to drop. He's one under par. When you're having a day like he has on the greens where so many putts look good and then don't go in, there's a, it's a smile of relief because the whole way that's making its way to the hole, he's probably, if he's human, thinking, well, how's this one going to miss? Because I hit it perfectly. Now Brooks for par. He was not happy with that chip. Notice all week before today, he's been working so hard on his short game. Would have been very disappointed with that result. Now this one uphill. It's going to be slow. Well, the form check is back for 2024. This will feature in Club 54, the Live Golf post round show later on. Um, if you've got your own swing or someone that you really can't stand and you have video of it, send it in and we'll get guys to uh, to assess it. Carl Thompson. Carl Thompson's a friend of mine, four-time winner on the Court Ferry Tour, having to hit one left-handed there. He's now not quite officially retired from his pro golf dreams, but he is in the business world. I think it's either selling insurance or real estate, but doing quite well. Good kid. Yeah. Wait, get get right. your swings in. Not, yeah. all, not all have to be yeah. pros. Or former pros. Hashtag live broadcast at live underscore golf league. Bryson now for a birdie. Took some extra time reading this putt. They are difficult to read out here. Very subtle breaks. Oh. Yeah, he can't buy one. Exactly. Back to 13 and Bubba's second shot. Very aggressive tee shot on his 20 yards short of the green. Oh, he got uh, it. That was a poor Thick. one. Here's Cam Smith. We're at 15. Jesus. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Is that you, Jerry? Oh, yeah. 45 years ago, maybe. What uh, a handsome what, devil you were. Yeah. You used to be able to take your picture in front of a million dollars at Benny Binion's Horseshoe downtown, and I'm sure that there was no outside <laughs> influence in us taking those pictures. I, I cannot unsee that. <laughs> <laughs> I still got the britches. Howard Farner. To get to five under par, and he drains it. He is tied for the individual lead with Paul Casey once again. Terrell Hatton, flop shot up onto the top deck. Oh, wow, that was just textbook perfect. That was on tape, now live on 15, DJ for Eagle.
Were you a natural blonde? Still am. <laughs> well, maybe after my reseeding, my overseeding recently. Well, that was a tremendous See, success, that, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. But you chose that color. I mean, there are, are many people that have that, you know, hair transplant that just looks like a hair hat. <laughs> I call it. It's an right. overseeding, yeah. If we watch our drone trace or one of our exciting new innovations, John Rahm on the T at 15 with ball speed and carry as well by flight scope. It's 296 to the bunker on the left. This hole should suit his eye and his shot shape. Little dog leg right. That's just so cool. Thomas Pizzas for birdie at eight. No. The big Belgian was after that one quickly. Back to the 15th tee for Bryson. On oh, the numbers. On this guy's drive is going to be different from John's, that's for sure. He can find the fairway in this par 5 15th. It's going to be a huge advantage for him with his length. Cam Smith made birdie at 15. He's one under. Wow. That has shortened the 15th considerably. Mm. So on the good tracer. Off, sorry, Harlem. He was so good off the tee last week. Bit of a shaky start for him. Three wood for Brooks. A spectacular shot. So Harold Varner the third and Paul Casey lead the way on day one of Live Golf Las Vegas, and the Range Goats have a two-stroke cushion in the team competition. Neiman for birdie out at 13. Waco. Go. Well done there. Cam Smith, Terrell Hatton, and Dustin Johnson all made their birdies at 15. Updating on the pylon to the left. And Taylor Gooch, a moment ago. Birdie at 12. now two back of Harold Varner and Paul Casey at the top. Mito Pereira not having a good day. He's out at number one. Six over around here. Well, that's uh, that's where the players walk off towards the next tee is all tangled and matted and it's like one of Elvis's 1970 shag carpets. <laughs> <laughs> My mother got to go see Elvis so many times. My dad worked at the what was then the Las Vegas Hilton as we look up toward Mount Charleston, where I learned to ski, Lee Canyon, way back when. And a beautiful overhead shot of the Las Vegas Valley and the tremendous strip skyline. Ever evolving. Here's Matt Jones, the Australian ripper. Uh, this will be just put the club head behind the ball and go. Refreshingly brisk. That's it's it's actually hard you know, when you go out to watch him hit balls. He does the exact exact same on the practice tee. He gets through a bucket in like a second. Yeah. 
the 15th hole at the Las Vegas Country Club, David. Yeah, one of only two par fives. This one at 571 yards. The players are still getting there. As Alf weaves his way up the fairway. And a figure eight shaped green at a 45 degree angle with a hump in the middle. There's nothing up there, right? One night. Uh, no. Just right at it. That's who's in the middle. Right here, but I mean, if we're leaving ourselves yeah. that, it's 85 to that, so it's like 290s, 205 to that right track. Uh, 190 is good. Bryson, some 50 yards ahead of Brooks. I know he hit a three wood, but still. Yeah, that's a curious lay this one club up. for him to hit off the team. He's just laying it up where, I mean, I, I mean he, can, he can get there still. He's got a plan. Paul Casey on the green at two for the outright lead. What a day he's having. Uh, okay. John, I'm here on the 15th. He's got the driver in his hand. 247 is the cover right on line with got all four range goats in the top eight in the individual pylon at the moment. This is Peter Uline. And he's back to three under par. The range goats lead by two. Right to left, should be a little bit of hurt. Okay. Bryson out drove John by some 23 yards. John is not short. Yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah. All right. A good one with this would be a bit high. I agree. All right. See, so coming that right on, buddy. Said in his press conference, he had to get used to the shotgun start. Everybody warming up at the same time. Everybody leaving at the same time. Getting in carts. Going to tee boxes. Starting at different tee boxes. He says he's really enjoying the atmosphere out here. He's having a lot of fun. Three wood, winds hurting, whole locations on the left side of this green. Go. Go. Matthew Wolf to tie the lead. This is at five. Birdie opportunity. Oh. Now to Bryson at 15. He can get there with an iron. Yeah. He's got four. Hook. hook one in. Hook. Let's keep drawing. On the lawn, about to come up and over that big hump. Well, it was no surprise to see John Rahm contend on Championship Sunday, but the real intrigue at the weekend was how would his team perform? Legion 13's rookie teenager Caleb Surratt answered the bell, as did the rest of the squad. Joaquin was assessed the penalty, right? So that took us from five back to three back. Okay, we can actually truly do this, right? We can make that up on the first hole. Now then, Kieran Vincent. Yep. We didn't really have a game plan. It wasn't like, Terrell, you do this, Caleb, you do this. Like, it was more of just go play golf and see what happens. This is far from gone. John Rahm. Money. Money. Legion 13 on margin. It was so clean. I, you know, I was, I was just cruising. Legion 13 are 12 under for the day. They're easily the best in class on Championship Sunday, and they lead by seven. Struggled on hole 17 all week. No, no, he knew it. I just, I hit another bad one. Oh no, oh no, no, no. I had the triple, and then I literally look up at the leaderboard, and as I'm walking to the next tee, we go from a four shot lead to one, one shot lead. Caleb Surratt's seven. I mean, I didn't even talk to my caddy on the way in. I just told him on 18 tee that we're gonna get it back. Caleb Surratt for a bounce back birdie after that triple bogey. Well played, young man. 
I just kept telling myself one more. Just one more. One more. Okay, looks a rod for another bird. The rat pulled up next to me to life. I'd have to wonder how he got a driver's license. <laughs> yeah, it's so young looking. Well, Legion 13 are going to win their debut competition in Live Golf. What a start for them. One thing we spoke about a little bit is how cool it was to be able to do that without Rom playing his best in the final round. Oh, I was sick. I was having the roughest day. It truly was a team effort, right? If you could describe teamwork as a feeling, you, you, you could feel it right there. I didn't even hold the champagne. I, I'm the designated trophy holder for the next couple of years at least. He's going to be a busy boy, I think, on the evidence of the first uh, event. Caleb Surratt as designated trophy holder. By the way, Kieran Vincent had the longest drive on day one by 26 yards. And he said, I guess dynamite comes in small packages. Yeah, he is quite long for his size, Kieran Vincent. is long in general, but I'm just glad I got something in common with Caleb Surratt. At 19, I kept telling myself quite often, just one more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just one. A few moments ago, Brooks, third at 15. Oh. It's also just a moment earlier, Bubba. First cut of rough at 14, his second shot. Good shot. Lovely shot. Now a third shot at 15 for John Rahm, Suan. Line looks good. Early on this week, I saw a lot of players practicing this shot. Gotcha. So get this up in the air. Just land this on that down slope and it should take care of itself. Well done. Harold Varner, the third, second shot at 17. <laughs> Caleb Surratt for birdie at seven. He's dropped a couple of shots after his electrifying start, but he gets one of them back. So Caleb is back to three under par. Sebastian Munoz, his second shot into the 18th hole. Water in front, water left, water right. There's no water there. Terrell Hatton at 16. 30 feet for birdie. Fifteen, Bryson for Eagle. And this would get things cranked up for his opening round. Oh yeah, way more You think I'm like? I think almost it's cool. Camera guy? I was just gonna say camera guy. Yep, going exactly. Yeah, it's gonna. It's gonna rip up on that top. Yeah, because you wanted to kind of come down on the crown and then maybe feed like pretty straight to barely right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like that visual. That works. I like 50 feet here. Okay. He's got about. 58 feet. It's all about feel. The double breaker is going to go right to left first and then break the other way as they reach the top of that mount. Jason Kokrak for birdie at 10. He's been up there with the leaders and had the lead for a majority of the day. And he's back to four under par. A stroke behind our leaders, Harold Varner the third of Paul Casey. DJ. Hello. Yes, he made his birdie. <laughs> Pooch at one. Pooch. 
they're calling him Pooch. Pooch, as in little puppy, big dog, I suppose. <laughs> Brooks on the live line, three inches break to the left. And that all was early, nailed that. And gets him in, in the red figures. Now Varner. This was to get him to five under, or excuse me, six under. But. Now Ram for birdie. By the way, Brooks at one under par isn't contributing for smash who've got into second place on 10 under but dal three under gooch three under kokrak four under so brooks with some work to do to count for his team on day one yeah this this group is underachieving at the moment Gooch for birdie at 13. Just didn't turn as much as he hoped for. Baba to tie the lead, Dom. Yeah, and uh, it was a very good second shot from an awkward lion. He would have just gotten a little bit of help from Sergio, who was just off the green behind his ball. Well, when he holds the stroke. finish. Yeah. Yeah, when Bubba holds the finish on his putting stroke, you know he hit it where he wanted. That was a complete misread then. Well, wasn't that bad a one, but because he'll get the quick recoil when he's getting a little tentative with that club. To the tee at number five. Shirt sleeves now. Charles Schwartzel. I think the temperatures have rocketed it up into the 50s, David. Yeah. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Didn't come much closer than that. Bryson, Brooks, and John Rahm have reached the 16th tee. A lot of yellows, a few greens, eight of them, and only one red. Find the red, Arlo. I can't. Cut, nope, no red. Not no. to be seen. No. The yellow one back there just past the walking path. What Must is that? Beauty. Did somebody lie up? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good par from there. Yeah, no kid. Bryce, it'll be first. Obviously, we want to spin off the left, so we want to fly it, what, one or two past it? Yeah, 56. Okay, 56. Uh, just under 10.30. Okay. Yeah, I got 10.30 at 160. Yep, just under. Yeah. Playing 153 to the hole, front hole location. He just has to be careful with how much spin he puts on this. Las Vegas. He's tied for the lead. This is a few moments ago to take the outright lead at the third. Brooks on the tee at 16th. Eight major champions in this group. 
five belongs to this guy. Pat Perez on the tier five. Quick rhythm. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah, lovely shot. I'm back to John Rahm at 16. I spoke to his roommate of three years, Alberto Sanchez. Loops for David Pouge. He said he knew the day he joined the team that he was going to be a world number one player. He was going to win a major, knew it immediately the time he joined the team. Such a standout player. That's the best of the three. Well, we're just approaching the closing stages of round one at Live Golf Las Vegas. Time to see if the Legion of Doom can go back to back, says Street Taylor. They're off the pace at the moment. Ranger Goats lead the way. Richard Bland for birdie at six. Tied 11th in Mayakoba with Paul Casey, six under par, 66 on the opening day. I think uh, an upset stomach led to a 74 on the Saturday, 67 on Sunday, but another excellent showing by Richard Bland, including that hole in one on the eighth on Sunday. He's finished in the points in the last seven events. Had an excellent end to last season to secure his place in the lock zone, the top 24, which uh, earned his way back for this season at the Live Golf League. Oh. That's Danny Lee for birdie at five. Green at eight, and Caleb Surratt, who dropped a couple of shots, got one back on the seventh, and now has another birdie opportunity at eight. Pat Perez made his birdie at eight. He's contributing for the four races who are tied for second. The 16th green at the Las Vegas Country Club, bathed in sunshine. I know, it's all dark this way. Okay. Yeah, just kind of let the little bit of downhill and the green cancel each other. Okay. Yeah, I like a little bit of left to right too. Just kind of this mound's gonna influence it a little bit. At least if you're gonna play anything, you gotta play that. He hasn't been as sharp with his wedges today. Seem to have the pulls to the left. I'm sure he's going to the range to work on that after his round.
Or from the right. I mean, I got the right. HP3 at 18, second yeah, shot. Just, is that going to do too much to it, mate? Said he wanted to make amends after finishing dead last in 54th in Mayakoba. Just wasn't his weekend at all. What a response from Haravana the third. Uh, joint leader with Paul Casey on five under par. Whilst that was happening, here's Brooks for birdie at 60. And now live with John Rahm for birdie. He walked in pretty quickly after Bryson's putt. To try and get a read. As I've said, a lot of subtle breaks out here. This isn't going to move very much. If anything, just inside left. bit firm on that line. Anuban Lahiri, his third shot at 11. Just a little clip off the top. And oh, really close. Well, it's still HV3 and Paul Casey at the top of the pylon in the closing stages. Warmer feeling outside, Arlo, right now, yeah. but not warm. Yeah, I just stepped out of the back of the box a few moments ago and just felt a little bit of heat emanating from the sunshine in the sky. I think it is going to warm up over the next couple of days. Actually, it's not. For these oh, is it really? No. I thought I thought Saturday was looking We're reasonable. We're going to be lucky to get to 50, 51 degrees, right. which is unseasonably cold here. We, it's not uncommon in southern Nevada to see snow-capped mountains, but rare to see it that far down toward the base. And the various mountain ranges are out here. We are back. Four holes to play for our feature group. Harold Varner the third and Paul Casey are leading the way on five under par. Let's take a look, folks, here at the last three holes. You got par five. Very easy hole. One of the easiest, obviously, only two par fives. Easiest on the course. 17. Somewhat difficult par four and then 18, a very, very difficult par four, although it's only averaging 4.1, a converted par five from what, how the yeah. members play it. Well, you can see, is it Paul in Polter, uh, Mr. Two Hats, on the green behind us here on 18. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Myself, Arlo White, with David Ferty and Jerry Foltz as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about Harold Varner the third because he finished 54th and dead last in Mayakoba, and yeah. he was way out of contention and not very happy with his performance. This is some comeback by him. Yeah, it sure is. You know, it just shows you how, how quickly these guys can turn it around. Uh, you know, you're never more than one good swing away from a comeback, Jerry. Absolutely. And, and they know that. It, it's kind of a little bit surprising, though, as we watch uh, as we watch Bryson get ready to play this tee shot. A little surprising. So many of these names we see at the top of the leaderboard didn't have good weeks last week. And it was a very short 
turnaround in terms of competing here today on Thursday. A good swing there. Bryson trying to get things moving. And Suan uh, Brooks Kepka is the next to tee off. You've got some news about his driver. Yeah, his driver had broke, uh, cracked this morning. So he's put an old driver in with the wrong shaft. And with the driving range being so small this week and not enough room for a driver, he hasn't been able to hit it. So he hit those first three way right and hasn't pulled it out since, which explains why he hit a three wood on 15th. Well, Las Vegas National has also offered their facilities for the guys if they want a, a larger size driving range to go to after play today. So we might see him over there. Caleb Surratt also cracked a driver mm. uh, yesterday or this morning. Unsure when, but uh, he's got the backup in play as well. Are you somewhat surprised at the sluggish starts made by Ram, Bryson, and Brooks today? Yeah, and uh, I think they'll be surprised as well that they're not further back. Yeah, uh, you know they're absolutely still in it. You know, no one's really pulled away to that extent. And when you look at first round scores as a competitor, 54 players in the field is a very good sampling size, especially when so many are some of the greatest players in the world. But uh, you look at a, a multiplier of that, considering similar weather conditions expected the next two days of you know, right around two to two and a quarter. Uh, so they're, now they're readjusting that potentially 20 under winning score number down to the low teens, perhaps, in their minds. But the thing is, there are so many players in that. They're bunched up, David, from five down to one under. Yeah, the, the whole field is kind of compressed. There's only a few players over par, and, you know, pretty much everybody's still in it at the moment. How about those range goats so yeah. far today, David? Like <laughs> Legion 13 burst onto the scene. John Rahm's team winning in Mayakoba, their first ever event as an expansion team. But the range goats, all four players are amongst the leaders today including Bubba Watson and they lead the way at the moment so you must be delighted with that. I am, I am over the moon my <laughs> my herd has made their way to the front. David counts range goats jumping the moon when he tries to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Harold Varner for birdie at 18. Ooh, that was to retake the solo lead. Charles Howe the third has gone for the, the big woolly hat. This for birdie at 13. And Chucky three sticks is two under par. Graham McDowell pops that one in. He's got it four under par. Just a shot back. Speaking of range goats, Thomas Peters a few moments ago for birdie at 10. And he gets it to four under par himself. So the Range Goats individually are excelling today. And as a team, they lead smash by one. Caleb Surratt, only two back, the youngster. The 11th green, just off it. Westwood. And we got Scott Vincent on the tee. He has gone from no bun to bun mid round. Something you don't see every day. Oh, it's Karen Vince, excuse me, you can tell by that finish. They're both playing together today. Yeah. You could argue that in full flow, as you can see at the graphic at the bottom of your screen, that Kieran Vincent's hair is, is even more impressive than his, his mm -hmm. brother out mm -hmm. there. Paul Casey for the outright lead. I guess it depends on your definition of impressive. <laughs> Certainly the family could use a shampoo endorsement. Because they're worth it? Yes. Next to the fairway at 17, and Brooks Kepka will be the first to play. Yeah. 
How many behind that? There's six behind it, so that would take it to 160. Like. Okay. I think just trust it because it looks very across. Yeah. It's not going to help it too much. Left to right wind for Brooks. Whole locations in that top left corner of the screen. Nine iron. To go, Bubba's third shot at 15, Dom, you watched. Yeah, I went with a driver with a second shot. Oh. Well, you know, playing the ball in preferred lies, quite often they can give themselves a good enough lie to get that driver at it. All four goats, four and a par. And we have six left of it, too. We do, yeah. Real aggressive with it. And it's, all, and it's all kicking back towards the, to the hole. Alright, Pitching wedge for John. Bubba Very made good. his birdie and he's five under with Casey and Varna. Just six paces of green to work with on the left side and six behind the hole. Not a big landing zone for these guys. Energetic. You just misjudge the breeze. Yep. Takes a look up. Bubba's got the range goats to 13 under par. The goats between them had three sub 70 rounds last weekend in my go, but Bubba had two of them. It's a different story today. 5 and Paul Casey. Thanks, Johnny. This is a pretty swing. Long time pupil of Peter Costas, my old buddy. Very simple action, straight back, straight through, nice and quiet. Lovely, elegant finish. John Rahm with his third, just behind the green on 17th. That 
It's a big miss by him with just a wedge. It's not too difficult of a shot. Everything's uphill, plenty of green to work with. Well done. Jason Kokrak for birdie at 12. Smash remain in second place. They've had a good opening day, 11 under par. Trailing the range goes by two. Oh, wow, what a beautiful putt. Brooks at 17. A little chop and release. And not too bad there for Brooks. The a tap in. Gray McDowell on the second green to tie the lead. A welcome return to form for the Northern Irishman. Oh. This is a bit of a stagnant attempt. Yeah. Points play straight. Okay. The wind's doing that too. Yeah, we'll say from this side it looks like it does go. Perfect. It's closer to this mound anyways, so I like that. and kick starts his opening round in Las Vegas. Birdie at 17, he is two under par. Honor bond for Birdie at number 12. Cam Smith, and this is an awkward spot to be coming at the last green from. Front oh. location as well. to 17 and John Rahm for par. This group teed off at two. They will, of course, finish their opening rounds at the first. This group will head to the 18th tee at the Las Vegas Country Club, David. Yeah, and it's a longish par four with well-placed bunkers here in the driving area. And you can see water in front, water right, water left. Kind of a triangular shaped green with a furrow. Almost a beer Ritz green there, Jerry. You know, if that furrow were deeper on the right. David Pooge with uh, a chance to go to four under par. This is at the third, and that's a birdie for young David Pooge, who switched from Torquay to the Fireballs during the off-season, and he's amongst those chasing Fala the third, Casey and Watson on five under. That 18th hole, I confused it earlier. It's, uh, it's actually the ninth hole for the members. Plays a masterfully designed par four. Another second at 16. A very Kevin awkward start. A little frisky. Eighteenth tee, and here is Bryson DeChambeau. Not that one there. Off the right a little bit. It's 287 to carry the father's bunker. Should be easy for this guy. Mm. A 
it's just fine. Your line? Yeah, just off that. Yeah, yeah. I feel bad for Bryson's golf ball. <laughs> that was absolutely smashed. Now, Bri uh, Brooks, pardon me. If you know now, doesn't want to take his driver out. It's got the wrong shaft in it. Cracked it overnight. Just the three wood. Another opportunity here for Paul Casey to take the outright lead. This is the green at five. Oh, and he takes it this time. Big swing from right to left, and he just read it perfectly. Paul Casey teed off at eight. He is six under par with two holes to play, and he's our leader. Clatters into the trees and over towards that inflatable whatever it is. with some work to do to save par at 16. Yeah, he does, uh, Arlo. You know, he likes to hook his short iron, so he's hitting a nine iron into this green. And with the wind moving from left to right, it was just such a dangerous pin for him with the water so close to the right. And just understandably, he uh, left it out there and uh, left himself an awkward chip, and now he's got a, a good 12-footer for par. Let's not forget that Bubba Watson was coming off major knee surgery when he joined Live Golf in 2022. He was getting himself back to full fitness during 2023. He was in contention in Bedminster for a large part of that competition, but uh, fell away with a final round 76. But just signs that Bubba Watson is getting back to what we regard and he would regard as his best. And that's great news for the range goats as well, who lead by two. But a drop shot for Bubba, who will drop to four under par, two back of Paul Casey. Taylor Gooch, his third shot at 15. Be a pretty standard bunker shot. A little bit short sided, downhill slope, but a nice little uphill lie. No problem for a highly trained professional. Ooh, the wolf packer here. And Matthew responds. Terrell Hatton at 18. Stands he was up and out of that one quickly. He didn't like it at all until it went in. <laughs> Harold Barner, his second shot at number one. bunker there Ortiz for birdie at 12 Tordake was one of the surprise teams during the 2023 season winning three events but that didn't stop them from making moves this offseason adding Carlos Ortiz from their rivals the Fireballs well his name is Carlos Ortiz Known him for uh, since I moved to the States in college in UNT. He's a great guy. He's going to bring a lot of talent on and off the course. I feel like he's someone that we've been wanting to have in the team for a while. And we're very excited to show it off. 
I'm really excited actually. I, it's, it's, it's just something I, I really wanted and you know, not, I love my other team, but these are, these are my boys. So it was just kind of meant to happen and now, now we're finally together. We have a nice relationship with the four of us and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, you, talk, you wanna talk about the fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, so we obviously love cars. I think it's almost a prerequisite to be part of the team. We got the fastest car. Depends who's driving. <laughs> yeah. We got a little bit too competitive, so we gotta take it a little bit more easy on the race track. I think it's a little bit more dangerous than golfing. <laughs> I think it's something that we all feed on each other, you know? Because if everybody's working hard and, and you're a little bit lagging behind, you'll notice it, you know? And also they will notice and they start pushing you, you know, to, to be better. That's kind of like a family and, and that's hard to have. And even before leave, we had that already. So when this opportunity came along, it was like perfect. It's like gonna be in college, but traveling around the world and, and you know, getting paid. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. Hmm. It was, like actually, dream come true. <laughs> it was actually four team wins for Torque last season. They won three out of four mid-season. They closed the gap on the four races to just seven points. And ultimately, they finished third in the team championship. They were six under par in Miami, five behind the Crushers, and a good season for Torque. Brooks, his second shot into 18. Just a little long goes down into that furrow that runs through the green. You have an uphill putt flattening out at the end. Just make sure you're still, guys. Turn around. Just took relief from the All right, buddy. Welcome One. Village tent. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't mind it though. I mean, we'll, we'll pass probably going to end up long. Yeah, exactly. He has a shot into this whole location, but he's got to keep it low. He certainly has to move it left to right. Can't afford to clip any trees. There is water at the front of this green. Little wind hurting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Excuse me, guys. Now that'll drift down into that furrow also. Not bad from where he was. I managed to get under the rope unscathed, unlike this man last year. <laughs> Deshambo from the first cut. That stays halfway up the slope. Yeah, he doesn't see where it is. Moments ago, Jason Kokrak, second of 13. Oh! Goodness me. Great chance to go to five under par. Now then, a few moments ago, Matthew Wolf closed within one of the lead. Having a fantastic opening day in Las Vegas. That was his birdie two at the par three. Eighth he has two holes remaining of his opening round. Martyr playing the par five, number one, his third. Oh, I played that beautifully. Little nip on it at the end. And that will get Martyr to minus six as well, tied with this man. That's Pat Perez with his second shot at the seventh. Beauty. Oh! That could have gone in for the same price. Well, the Live Golf League continues to improve 
uh, on an amazing on-site fan experience. To see it for yourself in 2024, just scan the QR code on the screen for tickets to future events. In March, we're bringing the league to Hong Kong for the very first time, and we'd love to see you there. Then in April, Live Golf will be back in Miami and looking forward to a great week in South Florida. Get your tickets and enjoy the golf. Phil on the tee at 16. Had the good start early. Two birdies in a row to start the day. Now lost a few back to one over. Just likes it instantly. Brooks at 18, Swan. Yeah, I was just talking to Ricky Elliott, his caddy. He apologized for not giving me clubs today. He said because he really doesn't know what he's going to hit. He started the practice rounds with a driver. Now he doesn't have a driver. Has to play the course completely differently. Almost never hits a through it on a par five. So definitely a different round for Brooks today. This is one under for his round, Suan. But if he takes a look up at the team leaderboard, his smash GC are level in first with the range goats. Gray McDowell and Taylor Gooch both four in the past so far today. Jason Kokrak is five under. Three scores counting in the opening two rounds in the team competition. And it's a shootout. All four scores count on championship Saturday this week. Uh, who would have thought Brooks's score wouldn't be counting today? By some so, distance as well. Yeah, especially after the way he played last week. But I'm sure without the driver in his bag, it's a huge disadvantage. So, still a solid round for Brooks today. Now John Rahm, left to right putt. By. Second shot at 17 for Bubba Watson, Doc. Yeah, good tee shot just on the left side of the fairway. Got to get your distance control right. A little bit short. It's got to spin away from the pin. Great line. Yeah, lovely shot. Back to 18 and Bryson. Bryson likes pacing out his putts. Let's know exactly how far it is. Pretty sure he has a measurement of how far that club needs to go back. How many feet, how many inches. There's a big leaderboard side of the screen. I'm sure he's taken a look at it. Teammate Paul Casey at the top there. Joined by Harold Varner now after tapping in for birdie. Here's Phil. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Vintage. 
Now, Phil played with a couple of NFL quarterbacks in the Pro-Am this week. Will Levis of the Tennessee Titans and a likely first-round pick in this year's draft, Drake May out of North Carolina. We put a mic on Phil during the round and, of course, TV Gold followed. You got two really, really good quarterbacks, Will Levis and, and Drake May here. What I've learned is that all good quarterbacks know how to play golf. Here we got 185. Wow. Uh-oh. Gary's golf really isn't a prerequisite for defensive back slash safety, is it? Quarterbacks make all the damn money, so. <laughs> Still a thinking man's game back there. Whoa. Good shot. That was just fundamentally sound, like great footwork, great movement. Them DBs got to talk trash, too. Now you got to talk some trash. So he's got a good fundamental swing. He's got a lot of speed. Yeah. Like, if I'm looking at that, I'm saying he likes he likes to throw the deep ball. I mean, look at that. Look at that power and strength and speed. You see that big, powerful arc in this swing? Like, I would think he would, you know, he throws the deep ball well. They keep making these damn quarterbacks bigger, faster, stronger. So you give him some golf tips. Let's let's see let's see if throw a little football I, action now. Right, you give right. him some golf tips. Critique it as you got. Right, there's your man. Got the caddy up there. Oh, right, he's throwing it right, I like it. I don't want to show up to the best quarterbacks in the NFL. <laughs> I'll just throw like a little, you know, line drive. Uh, a, little, a, little, a, little, a little soft iron, oh yeah. I like it, I like it. Gendarius. Oh, I love that, let's go. Touchdown, touchdown, heck yeah. I can see that uh, you guys are often going to have an incredible, incredible career. Thank you. Glad to play golf. Yes, sir. Yeah, big fan. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting us join. Yeah. Darius, man, thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Darius Butler there as well, former cornerback of the Patriots, Panthers and Colts. To see more of that excellent film, go to the High Flyers YouTube page as well as Live Golf Plus. Got a good, good right arm on him there, hasn't he, Phil? Yeah, those uh, football players got the three pretty good swings, yeah. too. Yeah, and Phil can throw yeah. a pretty mean hook from the mound as well. Yeah. Right-handed curveball and not a bad fastball. Yeah, he's a good ping-pong player, too. Brooks with Fairway Wood again. Paul Casey a few moments ago, this for birdie at six. What a good try. He's already made seven of them so far in his first round. And just the one bogey, that came at ten, having teed off at eight. John Rahm been having trouble with this club today. 289 to that first bunker on the right, 305 to the next. Let's see if you can find the fairway. Right miss is way better than the left miss. Actually, right now, it's better than hitting the fairway. Well, Paul Casey and Harold Varner III have hit form in Las Vegas. They're both six under par. The range goes level with smash. Oh, oh, great chance for a... Birdie putt for Bubba on 17. Great chance for a bounce back birdie. Oh, not a good stroke. Oh. He, he knew it. The minute he hit it, he didn't like it. To the first and Tyrrell Hatton's third. He teed off at hole number three. Hey, sign him up. <laughs> Well, L7 
elsewhere just a few moments ago. Danny Lee got it 2-2 under par with that birdie at seven. So he arrived on the eighth tee in fine fettle. Brandon Grace, one under par for his round, the South African. Member of Stinger GC, his third shot into 15. The par five and a birdie opportunity for Brandon there. That's what DJ has in front of him. Nice. That is the first fairway. I'm liking the look of that team leaderboard and how bunched up it is. On day one, the four aces bouncing back to form. Crushers who came second in Mayakoba. But it's Smash and the Range Goats leading the way in the early stages of Live Golf Las Vegas. In Nevada. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Befuddled by the spin on the approach shot. And still have this to get it to four under par. Really respectable round of golf in the making. Legion 13 boys had a celebratory team dinner on Sunday night. I'm not sure whether that was in Mayakoba or whether they'd managed to fly to their next destination by then. Winners by four shots. The expansion team in the winner's circle immediately and Tyrrell Hatton showing similar form to his championship Sunday 64 which helped them win and he is four under par, two back of our leaders. Legion 13, eight under par, that is three back of the four aces who are tied for third. Jason Kokark with a little punch and check there, beautifully played. Howard Varner, the third at two. Back to number one, Cam Smith, the magical man with the flat stick for birdie. Smith, three under par on the fringes of our leaders, Casey and Harold Varner. Let's stay for Dustin Johnson. Dustin would have gotten a pretty nice look at what this does at the end from Terrell Hatton. Of course, AJ doing his balancing act, otherwise known as Aim Point Express. And for those of you new to the game, you don't understand why anybody would straddle the line. And they're basically reading the terrain with their feet. The way the system has been designed, you try and estimate and train yourself to know the number, the percentage number of slope, one, two, three, or four. But essentially, it's as old as time, walking up and down the green, yeah. letting your instincts tell you which way is downhill. Dustin joins Cam Smith on three under. Technique gets a little tougher as we get older, David, and the equilibrium ain't quite at once was. Yes. <laughs> it's more stumbling than balancing. <laughs> and that clears the green for Brooks Kepka. His second shot. 
into the first. It's got three iron looking to go for this whole location on the left today. Sounded like a well struck yeah. golf shot. Oh, that was dangerously close. Just about carried that water. Ram will be next. So would you like for I? And the other thing, if uh, I would just look like it's this. That's kind of all we have. I think you just hit it. Hard one of those. Listen, there's nothing rough. Ends up the pink pants back there. It ends up right at that. And you just got to put up the hill. So I like can draw straight. I mean, I mean, whatever you want. A little straighter one would be good. If a little draw. Well, I should just speak perfect. Wind hurting. A little from their left. Foreign. For John? It's a big one with a little hurt. We've got the 247 to the hole. I think he's going to try and play a draw. Hold it up against the wind. Ah, oh, I tried to hit that so hard. Got a lot of distance out of it. Nearly, well, 10 feet or so short of hole high. And Kokrak got the 14th a little earlier. That was to save par and stay one behind the leaders. Exactly. A little off our left, but not much. Seven iron for what? Bryson. <laughs> 232 to the hole. It is Bryson DeChambeau. He's got a downhill lie as well. So that will flight it down. That's a monster seven iron. Thomas Peters at 13. Had a caddy mic with Harold Varner the third all day, and he might want to do it again after his day so far. Let's take a listen. I mean, if it if it's if it stays like this, I think the 54 is good because it feels like it's more down. 27 cover. I mean, as long as you as long as you get that thing in the air, I think it should be good. Yeah, just be aggressive on the line. Yeah, so I mean, we want to see we pitch this 80. That 80's playing 95. Just feels like it's dropped a little bit compared to what it was. So I'd definitely I'd play at 95s and take a bit off it. Be aggressive on the line as well, mate. On the left side of that flag. I mean, there's not a great deal of wind there at the minute, but okay. Come on, see your shot, mate. And Harold has this for birdie at two. Chris Rice is caddy from the city of Liverpool, the home of the Beatles, of course, in England. Dom, you watched Bubba Watson's second at 18. Yeah, I did. And uh, it's a shot that he's been playing very well today, that little floaty short iron. Dangerous shot, though, a little bit longer in that collection area. A little bit short, and you could find trouble. Oh, nothing wrong with that one. But not with that one. Bubba has that for a 65 to open his accounts in Las Vegas. Brooks's ball must have just carried that hazard. Yeah, I, I don't know how it got there, to be honest with you, Sue Ann, because, yeah. I mean, it's literally just over the water. How it stopped there is another story. Especially with a three iron, too. Yeah. Well, he's got a good lie here. A lot of green to work with needs to carry that 
ridge about 10 12 feet short of the hole looks like he's gonna fly this all the way back there what a shot lovely shot that long a bunker shot he was able to get a ton of spin on it and the ogletree his second at 10 just a moment ago So many short irons dancing around the hole today. What I'm certainly going to drop is that old Cessna's halfway submerged in the pond. Bryson just looking to take advantage of today's ruling with the lift clean in place. Further right he goes. Takes more break out of the putt. Just to simplify things. Okay. John's going to go ahead and putt first. Most of the way to the hole. Go. Go. Just look at the pylon on the left hand side of your screens. It went to seven under par for Paul Casey because he has just done this at seven a birdie and a first round 63 for paul casey and he leads the way on seven under par I wonder if Bryson's aware that Paul Casey's now seven under par. Yeah, I agree. So we got 20, 20 feet to the top. What are you? Twenty-seven and another twenty. Okay. His team crushes GC. I think it's one of the three teams that remain the same throughout the off season. They have such a fantastic dynamic between the four of them. And it's just going to move massively from left to right in the first portion of this putt. That one broke really early on him. All right. How about Paul Casey? Teed off at eight in his first round. He was one over after bogeying ten. And then eight birdies over his final 15 holes. bit of a scoring anomaly. Seven of the 13 teams have their captain as a non-counting score. Wow, you have got a lot of free time. Not including the Majestics who have three captains and they're all three counting. That, Jerry, includes Brooks Kepka, who's smasher in second place. This, though, for birdie at the first. 68 to open his account in Las Vegas. Brooks Kepka, two under par. Took play up 
Play it like 116, probably play 120. Yeah. Because I think you've just got more control with it. Yeah. So the green's like this. The green's going to sit straight off your left, so you want to get it coming down, if anything, just a hair left of it, because right of it's going to feed away. Okay? Come on. 120 show of that money. I just had a monkey mind there. I thought that was my tea. <laughs> I said, that's over a club link. Is it 20? 120, man. Oh my gosh. Fuck me. Fuck you, Luke. Hey, I don't like this, mate. I think that's going to help a little bit. I think if you didn't want to. I think you can go. I think 116, it's pretty much straight off your left. Keep an eye on it, I mean, it definitely feels like it's not hurting, so go ahead and fall on it. Watson for birdie at one. 18, excuse me, he teed off at one earlier on today, and he strokes that home for an opening round of 65, five under par for the range goes captain. Sue Ann, we'll send it down to you. I've got Bryson, he's just uh, finishing up his scorecard for John. He's got half the scorecard missing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you want to sign it. <laughs> Bryson, solid round today, three under par. Uh, at the start of today, did you think, are you surprised at all that the lead isn't as far ahead? Very surprised. Yeah, I thought this golf course was super gettable. The greens were actually very tricky. It's the first time anybody's really seen these greens, and so I think there's a lot of guys uncomfortable out there, and um, it's pretty tricky. I, I don't know why. The wind was very variable. Um, pretty variable today can't speak my English is terrible right now uh, but no it was it was a good test of golf and I'll tell you that uh, there's a deep score out there I'm not surprised I wouldn't be surprised if there was a 59 this week so it's t definitely doable uh, ball's going far you just got to control your wedges my wedges were terrible today so I got to go work on that but. Uh, your teammate Paul Casey seven under par <laughs> were you watching the leaderboard at all for his scores yeah I, I saw his uh, scores like five under and he was six under and I finished a seven so I'm pretty proud of the guy and he's an incredible golfer I, I don't know what else to say I um, surprisingly people don't realize how much I actually lean on him for advice and wisdom in a lot of situations so I'm proud of him and uh, excited to see him at the top of the leaderboard as a defending team champions uh, what do you think your chances are this year in winning the team championship with the addition of John Rahm's team yeah I mean the addition of John Rahm's team kind of screwed us up last week but uh, we're pretty good on Sunday uh, the four scores counting the last uh, day each week is going to be, I think, really good for us, knock on wood. Uh, over the course of time, us steady eddies will just keep going and we'll see how it plays out, but I feel pretty good with our team. All right, thanks for the chat. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Sure, Bryson, you're a steady eddy. Thanks, Bryson. Paul Casey's lowest ever live golf round today, 63, seven under par. This is uh, Graham McDowell on the green at five. Oh! 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 Dom, it's all yours. Bubba, a solid week last week, a 65 today. Do you feel you're close to being back to your best? Yeah, I'm, I'm really close. We've been working really hard on the off season. Um, we knew that the leg, the knee wasn't quite, the, all the muscles weren't quite there, but we were gaining on it rapidly. So this off season, I could really put some time in. Um, Looking forward to it. Mayakoba is a very tough week, very tough driving golf course for me. Um, two over the last round, but no one coming here. I feel good in the desert, green grass, rye grass. I feel like I can I can play off of it. Looks like four under is going to be the worst score in your team. You've got to be very proud of them. You don't need to kick them up the backside tonight, do you? <laughs> no, not at all. We knew going into Mayakoba it's going to be tough. Um, you know, all golf courses fit somebody, um, and our team wasn't the team it fit. Well, well played. Congratulations. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Anoban Lahiri, third shot at 15. He plays for the Crushers. Dom's absolutely right. Matthew Wolf is finishing his round at five under par at the moment on the 10th, the par four. Peter Uline, four under par, not counting for the Goats. They are a combined 19 under as it stands at the moment, 15 under with the three counting scores, a lead of two. Yeah. Oh, yes. Harold Varner the third from 54th in Mexico to tied first in Las Vegas. 63 for HV3, seven under par. Adrian Morocco at six. That's a good way to finish. Jason Kokrak has had a decent day so far. This is his third shot at 15. Matthew Wolf has the opportunity at the 10th to end with a birdie and a 64. He would be six under if he puts this away. Every chance, not far away, but a, an excellent opening day for Matthew Wolf. A 65, a counting score for the leading range goes. Green at 15, and honor Bon Lahiri. That's dead center for honor Bon. Move him to four under. And another round of well, 66. Yeah, I think Bryce was right. Nobody went super low, but there's so many people there, right there. Let's uh, dip in to Paul Casey's post round press conference. He's speaking live at the moment. I couldn't figure it out last year. I was still battling stuff. Um, I feel really good about things. I don't feel like I'm, you know, quite at my peak physically. I mean, I'm getting older, but um, I'm no slower. The ball speed's up there. Um, you know, I really feel if I can, the confidence is probably the last missing piece right now. So if I can get that confidence back, there's no reason why I can't shoot plenty of low rounds this year, which is the plan. I feel like I've not really, you know, made my mark yet. I mean, I came my first year on live. There were some good results, but last year was disappointing, other than the team aspect. I mean, I love being part of the Crushers, but um, I don't feel I've done my bit contributing and, and having that individual success as well. One question just about, obviously, this is probably the coldest day we've played in live. Was it a big deal? Did you kind of get... No, it's not that cold. I mean, there's no, there wasn't frost delay. There's no, you see some guys in woolly hats and stuff, but it's not. I think it was a perfect day's golf in the end, you know, crisp. Um, you know, I, I, the thing I would add to Jane's question about if I play this golf course before, I'm not, but I, this is, we're at, I think, 2,000 feet. This is, this is like being in Phoenix, which is my home. So, um, you know, Phoenix, I think 1,500 feet, Scottsdale up there in the 2000s. I'm very used to this kind of altitude and how the ball flies in the desert. So this, to me, this is like playing golf at home. Jason Kokrak for birdie at 15. That slips by, but a very solid opening round of 65 for Jason Kokrak, who will go into the second day on Friday at five under par. We shall be back here at the Las Vegas Country Club to wrap things up in just a few moments' time. And what a difference a nice round makes. You know, you shoot 75 and you come in and say, it was really cold out there. Shoot a little 63, and you and you say, yeah, just crisp, a little crisp. 
Well, especially for someone like Paul Casey, who grew up, you know, in and around London, you're going to get this kind of weather a lot in the British Isles. Not a good day. Yeah, we'd be sunbathing on a day like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Westgate, formerly the Hilton, just basically almost connects to it, might even connect to the Las Vegas Convention Center, some of the peaks of the nearby peaks of the nearby mountain ranges. Oh, that's one of the best shots of the day. Yeah. Tuck just to the south of that is Red Rock Canyon, where you can go do some tremendous hiking if that's your thing. When would you get a palm tree in the foreground and snow in the <laughs> background? <laughs> that's stunning views and having like I said been born and raised here not uncommon to see snow on the mountains but rare to see it all the way down near the foothills won't last long a few more days it'll be gone We're back at the Las Vegas Country Club, Live Golf Las Vegas. Day one is in the books, and what a day for Paul Casey and Harold Varner III. Remember HV3, who was traded to the four aces by Bubba Watson's Range Goats, came 54th, dead last on the opening weekend in Mike Ober. He said at his press conference as he was taking shots from his teammates, including captain Dustin Johnson, that he needed to make amends, and he sure has on day one here with a 63. But it's interesting listening to Paul Casey, who also carded a 63, his joint low lowest live golf uh, score since uh, Adelaide last year that physically wasn't quite at the races last year and individually he's part of the champion crushers team of course but individually wants to make an impact on the live golf league and so far in pretty good form at a 63 today that was excellent from Paul Casey yeah it really was he's got one of the prettiest swings out there uh, like I say works with Peter Costas one of the best teachers in the game and uh, he, he really makes the game look simple when he plays well yeah he does and he's you know he's battled injuries uh, for a guy who's extremely fit for a lot of his career but he also has had a tremendous career pre live golf yeah. and also a tremendous uh, career in uh, in team play in the Ryder Cup he certainly has let's take a look at uh, a few of Paul Casey's highlights then on day one he teed off at eight he bogeyed at ten so when he arrived at 12 he was one over par and this was his tee shot thereafter eight birdies for his seven under par 63 this was a birdie put at 16 and you can see Bryson DeChambeau delighted for his teammate he knows very well what Paul Casey is capable of this was a delightful touch at 18 he might feel that he left a few shots out there as well on the greens this was for birdie at five And then for birdie at seven to complete his round of 63, seven under par. And at that point, he had the solo lead before Harold Varner III birdied his final hole. And as I've mentioned, he was 54th and last and almost embarrassed with his own performance in Mayakoba. But what a bounce back by HV3. Yeah, I want to paint what he's been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, to make a turnaround like that, but like, you know, th these guys are so good, you know, something just clicks in their head, you know, they start to see the shots, they start to visualize it again, and, you know, this is what can happen. Yeah, I say sometimes golfers are like real estate agents. They're, they're, they always think that next big deal, deal is right around the corner. In golf, you have to be an eternal optimist just like that. No matter how bad you play, you got to think you're just one elixir, one, one cure, one swing thought, one magic little nugget away from playing good golf and it can happen in a heartbeat.
heartbeat. You can go from playing horribly to playing very well, uh, very, very quickly. And for someone like Paul Casey, that confidence can come soaring back before you know it. It's kind of the chicken of the egg. And it can happen the other way just as quick. Way, uh, I think quicker, <laughs> actually, yeah. yeah. Well, he looked a little edgy, didn't he, in Mike Hober over the weekend, but a far calmer Harold Varner the third here in Las Vegas today, playing for the four races, of course. So that's pressure enough for HV3. He teed off today at the fourth. That was his tee shot at five. Then a birdie opportunity at eight. He was bogey free all day today, Harold Varner the third. This was birdie at 14. Just a very calm HV3 out there today. Birdie at 16. He was motoring at this point. And then finally, a birdie at three to end his round. And an excellent seven under par, 63. And the joint lead overnight going into day two with Paul Casey. So there you have it, and it's Range Goats there on after. Thomas Peters, Bubba Watson, Matthew Wolf, all five under par. Peter Uline, four under. Jason Kokrak had the early lead. He's within two of the lead. Graham McDowell and Taylor Gooch, a couple of other smash players to contribute today. They are second to the Range Goats, who've had a terrific day. You needed five under par to register for the Range Goats today. Matthew Wolf with birdie at three, 65 for Wolfie. Peter Uline, four under par, doesn't count today. That was for birdie at 17. Was it really that cold? But anyway, it worked for Peter well, Uline. Peter had shorts on under that that he hit. He had sands the uh, rain, rain pants later and was playing in They had the only two players out there playing in shorts today. This is Bubba's birdie at six. And it's good to see Bubba Watson in contention. It teed off at the first hole today. This is his second shot into the seventh. He was in contention on Championship Sunday in Bedminster, but the wheels came off there. And let's see if Bubba, who's feeling much better physically, can keep this together for the weekend. And Matthew Wolf. With birdie at eight, the range goats are rocking in Las Vegas. An excellent opening day for Bubba Watson's team, who came down in 11th place in Mayakoba, as Legion 13 took the title in their first ever Live Golf League event. So the goats are there with a one-stroke lead over the Crushers, who are in familiar territory on the podium. They were second in Mexico. Smash 13 under par, a much better performance from the four aces. They are 13 under, that's a tie for third place. And Legion 13, well, you don't want to sleep on them after what they produced in Mayako, but they are eight under par as well. So what are your main takeaways, David, from the opening day here in Las Vegas? Well, nobody really got away, yeah. you know, like I thought, you know, someone might, but I think we're going to see, you know, 60 or around that, you know, before the end of the week. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's a golf course that's really gettable, like Bryson said, you know, and there, there are guys like Brooks and uh, Dustin Johnson, you know, who really didn't play that well today, but are, you know, still right there. Yeah, if the wind, if the wind is not up, the wind's calm or light, uh, and these greens stay as receptive as they are right now, they'll figure it out, and they'll they have so many short irons in their hands if there's no variables to try and figure in they're going to tear it apart we should very likely see something sub 60 if that's the case but there was a 57 today in professional golf on the <laughs> yes, court very tour sub 60 used to be cool now it's becoming commonplace yeah. yes we had a 59 didn't we in my cobra yeah. with uh wako neiman but you look down that's that pylon you've got taylor gooch on four and a par solid 67s three under for cam smith dustin johnson wako neiman himself is two under and you'd regard yourself as still being well in contention with 36 holes to play wouldn't you oh absolutely you know i think anyone within seven shots of the lead um you know maybe even more we've we've seen those incredibly low scores you know they've, they've got a feel that they're still right in there yeah within seven shots of the lead no doubt but I, yeah. you also know that you just really can't afford to make any mistakes no. with only two days left and knowing that with that many people and that good of scores with seven five and, and so on somebody's gonna not all of them are gonna play mm. just you know stagnate there at that number wonderful to see Bubba producing yes 
He hit so many beautiful short shots today, and he really is an artist. He's a shot maker. You know, people talk about ball strikers all the time. He's a shot maker, kind of in the Trevino style. Well, like you once famously said, the guy can't see straight. He has never hit a straight golf ball on purpose in his life. <laughs> he makes every it's just, the ball has to be moving. That's the way he sees golf. That's the way he sees the course. Yes, and physically he's approaching his best again, and that is uh, affecting his game in a very, very positive way. And his range goats are 15 under par after the first day, so they are looking good at the top of the team pylon at the moment, out of the crushers with smash and the four races two strokes back. Now then, we are wrapping things up here after an exciting opening day in Las Vegas. For those around the world leaving us now, it's time to switch over to Club 54, the Live Golf post round show, which can be found globally on Live Golf Plus or the Live Golf YouTube channel. Join us tomorrow for our second round coverage from Live Golf Las Vegas. That's at 1 p.m. Eastern time or 10 a.m. local. And we will see you then. It should be another chilly start in Las Vegas. We'll see you tomorrow. never sleeps best entertainment in the world so much to see so much to do and what an incredible round one we just had Paul Casey doing his thing HB3 with a big day everyone is cold here in Vegas but everyone's excited and we're here to chat about it a perfect day one if you ask me welcome to club 54 post round show we're gonna get right into it with all of the fun right here live in Las Vegas Welcome to Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and joining me in this cold is the lovely Live Golf commentator, Sue Ann Hang. Sue Ann, thank you so much for joining me in this cold. It's actually, to be honest, it's not that bad now because we have the sunlight on us right well, now. Well, listen, I just spent the last six <laughs> hours in the cold, and, uh, you know, don't say I don't do anything for you. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it, Sue Ann. Uh, how, how, what, do you have any tactics before we get into this? in the cold like what keeps you warm out there what are you doing how layers, do you do it <laughs> layers plenty of layers and uh some hand warmers in my pocket actually but you know it's one of those things where you feel bad for the golfers out here right it is oh, difficult man. to to try and swing the club in this type of temperature i mean some of them are more used to it than others uh depending on on where you grew up playing obviously the europeans are probably more used to it than the americans sure. but yeah it is a, a tough day it's windy out there it's it's cold it's no fun but I Good golf today, it though. Like a lot of great golf. It was so hard to follow. Everyone was doing well today. So yeah. I want to talk about it. You had a chance to follow three guys mm -hmm. today, one of them being John Rahm. Now, he had a day maybe he wasn't hoping to have, but I want to know some of your insights from today following him around. Yeah, it was a heavy, heavyweight group that I had. Eight majors between all of them. Five belongs to Brooks. Um, but John today he just didn't have his best. You know, he felt just... Everything felt a little off. Timing was a little off with his swing. Uh, it wasn't quite hitting the driver as well as we saw him last week. Ball striking wasn't quite on point. Didn't make as many putts, but still managed an under par round. It's just what good players like himself do. They just hang tight. They get a number out there, try and get under par, um, and, and not pull too far away from the lead. Yeah, so we're going to actually look at some of these highlights. You were also with Brooks today, mm -hmm. and so something happened with him. We're looking at John here. Some of the highlights from today, a little struggle. Um, did, was there anything else you noticed that was going on maybe? Was it just, would you say, an off day? Uh, no. Obviously, for a, a normal golfer, this is a great day, right? Yeah. But yeah. for John, um, what, what did you notice with this? You know, it's just, look, it's a quick turnaround from Mexico, right, and a massive temperature change. The driving range is not as uh, big in terms of access to warm-up and practice. He can't really hit drivers uh, at this driving range. I don't know if maybe that played a part into his mindset. Maybe he wasn't as comfortable with his driver today. Uh, but this is him here. Uh, beautiful shot there. Yeah, that's, and, and that's beautiful right there. Yeah, he's, I mean, he look, he pulled together a great round of golf as he would. He's very impressive and um, stayed very calm. Seemed pretty happy and relaxed yeah. out there, actually. I was, I was just about to ask his spirits. How was his uh, morale after? It seemed like he was totally fine. Yeah, he was. I mean, look, you can't play great all the time, right? And, and yeah. for these guys, when you don't have your best 
on the day. You just try and grind it out, get the best score you can, and then move on, work on the stuff that you need to work on. I'm sure he's probably at the driving range or maybe on the putting green. <laughs> right now. And Yeah, right now, and trying to <laughs> just sharpen things up again for tomorrow, and that's what you do. So you're with Brooks Kepka as well. His team is doing great right now. Yeah. Uh, individually, what, what did you see from Brooks? Something happened today you mentioned to me off camera. That's right. I mean, he, he unfortunately had his driver crack overnight, and so he put an old driver in today with, I guess, a shaft that isn't suitable for him. Uh, as I mentioned, the driving range here, you're not able to hit drivers because of how, how small it is. Yeah. Uh, so he wasn't able to try it out. And so he took it out, played it with the first three holes and was like, nope, he missed <laughs> all of them right. And was like, never seen it after the third hole. So um, three woods for him. Obviously that plays a huge disadvantage, uh, especially into the par fives. Uh, but you know, he still played a great round, you know, and, and, and these things happen. It happened in the game of golf, and you just have to kind of go through it, decide that, okay, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to hit three woods. Be prepared to hit longer irons into, into holes. Be more patient with yourself. And it seems like that's what he did today. Took the opportunities when he can and just played smart when he couldn't. Definitely got to have that mental resilience. Let's yeah. take a look at some clips from Brooks Day today. Uh, hopefully, will we see you in the background somewhere soon? And where, where are I'm you sure. at over here? Hiding, <laughs> hiding. Shivering in the Vegas cold. <laughs> <laughs> now this is a shot on the fourth. Yeah. Oh, was a great way to open up That's his round. Beautiful right there. And, and this is this at is, four, right? Yeah, curling That's... left to right putt for a birdie here. That was very pretty to watch. That's I think I was standing behind said. him there. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Look this at was that. a this was a great looking shot in the air. I thought he was gonna hold it for a second. <laughs> He's right at it. So good. That's that is phenomenal. Yeah. That's so cool. You get to follow these guys. Bryson DeChambeau. Let's let's talk about Bryson. He was the third player you followed today. Mm -hmm. Any cool insight that you have for any of the golf geeks out there that want to know? I mean, he's got so much information in that brain of his. Um, he's very passionate about the game of golf. He's very passionate about growing it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I spoke to him on hang time and he's very passionate about bringing a younger audience, making the sport more accessible for people. Um, and that's what he, he wants his legacy to be. You know, that's what he wants to, to leave the game of golf, knowing that he grew the game. Uh, but he's he's a talented player. Look, today he just didn't have his wedge game on point. Um, I was tucking it left for a few of them. And with his length, especially on a golf course like this, you yeah. would hope that he would take full advantage of that. And I think he said that to me in his post round interview when I talked to him on the first green. He said he just didn't have his wedge on, on point. But he's also very surprised that the lead isn't as far ahead as he thought that it was going to be at the start of today. Right. He said he saw a 59 out here. He still sees a 59 uh, that, that's possible out here. And look, I wouldn't surprise me if he goes out there and shoots 59 tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, I, I want to dive more into your chat with him. You also did a hang time segment with him, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But first, let's look at some highlights from today. <laughs> Got to get the highlights, y'all. All right, from Bryson DeChambeau, here we go. And uh, always love uh, some commentary from Sue Ann. Look at, look at this. Yeah, this is a long range here on the 15th down this hill, curling putt. There you go, look at so that. So well judged. This is his birdie opportunity on the 17th. Look at that. Wasn't making any putts all day. <laughs> And then Came started making towards the end. Right yeah, there. that's right. All right, so we mentioned hang time. Mm -hmm. We know you had some time with him. And I remember you, you mentioned just earlier, he's really big into growing the game. I remember watching this segment and just hearing about how much he wants to grow on social media and just expand the game to people who may not know a lick of thing about golf. So <laughs> I'm excited to see it. Take this out. Check this out. It's a clip from hang time. What's up? We're here at Las Vegas Country Club for this week's Live Golf event. I am just making my way to the 10th tee to meet up with captain of Crushes GC, Bryson DeChambeau. Let's go. Well, Bryson, it's been a 
long off season, but you were so busy um, yeah. pumping out content for your YouTube channel. Yeah. What's your goal for that? Uh, brand awareness, growing a fan base of uh, hopefully not only just the Crushers and myself, but, mm -hmm. but Liv in general. I want people to realize who I truly am and hopefully we can provide some great entertainment and great content for people to enjoy. Well, what's the true you? Th this is, for so long I was presented as this scientist sort of person. The problem is that I have a lot more. I'm deeper than that. Yeah. And I'm very emotional, as people have seen before. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a good thing. I'm passionate. I care about the game. I care about growing the game. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to get from 100 million golfers to 150 million golfers. And that's, that's the goal, just growing it and creating great viral content, fun content that people can enjoy worldwide. Make sure you guys check out uh, Hang Time with Suen. That is a great clip there uh, that we shared, and there's more. That's not it. There's a whole bunch of it with Bryson, so make sure you guys tune into that. We're in Vegas, <laughs> and we are out in the cold right now. Big thanks to Suen Hang. Stick around for more. We're going to talk some more golf with some special guests. Stay tuned. All right, as you guys know, Las Vegas is the place to be. And uh, why don't we check out a video to make that very clear? Check it out. Vegas, baby. Come on. Man, I'm pumped. It's party city, you know? I think it's going to be really cool to, to showcase the talent in a place like that. Yeah, I mean, I think Vegas could be unbelievable. Being so close to the strip, so many people are in town. I'm definitely very excited about that. Live Golf to Las Vegas with the Super Bowl is one of the best things that we could have done. Those fans are the same fans that would really enjoy and appreciate what Live Golf has to offer. We're going to Las Vegas Country Club. It's a golf course that I really like. You know, it's in my hometown, right on the strip. It'll be popping. Very excited about playing out of home because my record at home is pretty good. Yeah, I think it could be a lot of people, it could get noisy. Vegas, Super Bowl weekend. Really won't get any better than that. As you can see, a whole lot of people are excited out here in Vegas. The social media is going crazy. Las Vegas showing out, y'all, from Smash GC. I mean, look at the crowd. It's, it's exciting. You guys, I wish you guys were here who are tuning in. The fans are crazy, y'all. I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. <laughs> from Bubba Watson. When in Vegas, you go see the Golden Knights. Looks like they had a good time there at the game. Got to make my way out there. Pretty cool hearing fans chanting for Danny Lee in Vegas. Hashtag live golf. Keep the tweets coming, guys. We love them, and we'll throw them on the show. Uh, but let's get back to the action here in Las Vegas. Club 54 post-round show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and we have some special guests with us from Legion 13 coming up next. All right, and joining us here from Legion 13, Caleb Surratt, and of course, my OG favorite, Jerry Fultz. I'm freezing, and he played in it's... short sleeves today. <laughs> Kid's tougher than me. Caleb, thanks so much yeah. for joining us today. Yeah, no um, problem. Super excited to chat to you. My first question to you is, how has your experience been at Live so far? You have had so much going on. Overall, how's the experience yep. been for you? Yeah, there's, look, there's a lot of moving parts to, to deal with, right? Especially when it's all catching you by surprise, right? It's just, you go from like having a really, really calm life with, you know, family and friends and in college and enjoying it to like everything in the world coming at you so fast. So, uh, you know, the experience has been on a ugh. the experience has been unbelievable. But what's been more unbelievable is having like an amazing team out here around me to, to be able to help with all to that. say the least. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, well, you had uh, another stellar round, just like you finished last week. You started off strong again today. Let's take a look at some of your highlights from today's round. Starting, where are we got him? You, you got the rundown here, uh, Christian. Caleb, take us through here, uh, these moments right here. This is. Yeah, I had a uh, mud ball in the woods. I hit a bad tee shot and punched it out of the front. And I'm not usually a chip in guy, but. Blind squirrel found a nut, I guess. Yeah, but you you spent a little time with uh, before the season started when you were when you signed with John Rom uh, with him and he showed you a few new shots. He did, you? yeah. Well, my my uh, <laughs> my short game was very limited before some of that, so um, <laughs> I've learned a lot from him already. Now, what's going through your mind on, on this one right here? This is at two. 
Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just kind of doing my thing, right? Like I'm s sticking to the same stuff, you know, I'm sticking to my same plan. I'm not trying to change anything about my golf. And, uh, you know, it's, if I play well, it's going to add up here too, I think. What, so. would you, what would you say you've learned the most in your short time here with John and the team? Right. What would yeah. You say? Just how good, like, the biggest thing I've learned is just a lot of how great the players are, right? Like, of course, you have your, you have your top, your top guys, right? You have your Rom, you have your DJ, you have your, your Cam Smith and Bryson. But like, you know, you know, nobody talks about all the other guys that played on the PGA Tour forever, right? So right. it's it's super deep, and you know, it's very easy to have an average day, right, and get past. Um, it's, it's not it's it's not just top heavy. That's one thing I've learned. So I didn't expect that coming out here. So everybody's unbelievable and uh, good to learn from. C couldn't agree more. Yeah. You have a you have a great captain in John Rom, but you also yeah. have a great coach in your college coach in Brennan Webb, and he gave you some advice uh, before this when you made the decision to do this. And, and he said, always remember, no matter what everybody tells you, that Caleb Surratt is good enough to be there. That's it, yeah. Don't try and listen to too many people. And how is that treating you so far? Yeah. You know, one thing that we've talked about a little bit is like, it, it's it's great to be able to learn, right? And and to, um, you know, ask, ask all the guys that have so much experience questions. But at the same time, like, I find myself, the more questions I ask, the more I feel like I'm subconsciously making myself feel unprepared. And I, I'm trying to convince myself that I am prepared to be out here. I am prepared to learn. Um, but, you know, it's it's been crazy. I'm still learning as I go. You know, I really am. This is only week two of a lot, so. Your, your friends and, and teammates just a couple weeks ago, they're a little warmer than we are right now. They're <laughs> they down are, in, they're Puerto in Puerto Rico. Rico yeah. And they're uh, gathered around <laughs> watching you on their phones, on their devices. They got a little triangle. Oh, that's cool. Look yeah. at that. That's super cool. Pretty cool. And you want to talk here. about just the dialogue you've had with some of your friends ever since you've joined Liv and, and some of the conversations you've been able to have with them. You want yeah. to chat about that a little bit? Yeah, we, look, my teammates and, and friends have all been in great support of everything, right? Like, uh, it was a big team decision coming here, and, um, you know, I couldn't be more pleased with uh, that decision and, and everybody's support around me. So they're, they're still my best friends. You know, nothing's changed. Well, we actually, uh, I think we have something special. We from... might have orchestrated something. We here. got yeah, something, Jerry, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, right, let's take a look. Take a look at the screen. Hey, Rat, we're here at the airport in Puerto Rico. Uh, I just realized I have your laptop in my backpack. It's, it's not like you need it anymore, but like when you get back to Knoxville, I have it. Hey, what's up, Caleb? Hope everything's going well in Las Vegas, but we're finally here in Puerto Rico, and I think it's time that I take over number one, and I appreciate everything you've done. What's up, Rat? We just got to Puerto Rico. We miss you. Uh, it was nice getting to the airport this morning and not having to go back because you left your driver's license or wallet or whatever it may have been. There was uh, there was no lies in any of that. That's all um, past experiences. <laughs> That's incredible, Caleb. Thank you yeah, so no much problem. for your time. Thanks for no joining problem. us in this post round show, uh, and the best of luck to you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, Keep guys. Keep up the great yeah. work. All right, Thanks and there's some tweets it. on the social coming in about you, Caleb. Phenom written all over him. Impressive, and only at 19 years old. You're good to go. I uh, gotta love that. The fans are definitely going crazy. I, I love talking about Caleb to to Jerry. Um, just watching him in Mayakoba and the resilience he has at such a young age, absolutely impressive. Also, make sure you guys are throwing in some tweets, some social media action. We are glad to take some of the social media action there. Um, Jerry, thanks for joining me in the post. I want to talk to you a little bit. Let's about... talk about my prediction earlier. You put me on the line, remember? <laughs> I, did, yeah, I, I think the aces are right there, aren't they? I, they came in hot, too. I, I believe think. they're right there. Absolutely. It was yeah. almost like every member of four aces in the first three uh, yeah. three holes were but at the top of the Just list. to show you how big of an expert I am, the Team Stinger was the one I picked in the Fantasy League. Yes. They are last. It's okay, Jerry. Last. It's okay, Jerry. You can't always be right. We're going to take right. a look at Smash highlights. Let's take a look at Smash GC. All right, Jerry, I would love to, to hear some That's of your input J here. Jason Kokrak yeah. right there. Just a, he's just a quiet, quiet uh, assassin, if you will. He plays so well so often. He's about as solid as a teammate as you'd ever want. And there's no course that doesn't suit him with his power. I mean, what... What does it take to just consistently show up like this? A bulldog mentality and a laissez-faire attitude that you don't
don't really care when things go bad. Now, here is the guy that's going to make the difference if Smash contends for the team title this season uh, because he didn't have a good season last season. You know, there was a lot of talk as he passed his prime. Does he have any good golf left in him? All that matters is what Grant McDowell thinks, and he believes he still has great golf ahead of him. And uh, and Brooks Kepka believed in him as well to, to add him as the final member of that team for 2024. It's so fun watching this team. Uh, what would you say you would see uh, now that we're, we're kind of scaling back about predictions <laughs> oh, what do you what's the future you see for these guys smash is my, smash was uh, smash and crushers were my predictions for the year I'm a smash guy so they uh, they're my predictions for the year but like I said a lot of it is how Graham McDowell does this year and a lot of people have a re, are, are buying the stock now and then selling it later well we've been talking about Graham McDowell and our very own Rachel Drummond is over with GMAC right now check it out Hello, GMAC. Great round. Four under par, five birdies. We're going to look through some of your putts today. Here we go on the B roll. This is going to give you all the positive vibes yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's get the B roll kind of going. A, kind of a funny day in the greens today, a little bit. I kind of hold a few that I shouldn't have hold, and I missed a few that I definitely should have hold. But, um, that's yeah, golf. That's true. That's true. I'm, not, I'm not sure that's why I sound so surprised. Sure sound so surprised. Um, but I mean, obviously, looking at the uh, looking at the highlights there, obviously a lot of putts going in. First and foremost, these greens are ultra pure here at Vegas Country Club. I mean, the golf course is in great shape. Um, good speed. The greens. Good speed. The greens are good speed. And um, you know, like I say, you can see there's a ton of guys making putts. So. Um, you know, I feel like I left a few out there in the green, so um, definitely got a little bit of work to do as I move into tomorrow. Let's have a look. Let's okay. Let's have Some a of the makes. There's your name and lights. There we go. Here we go. First one of the day. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, the greens were a nice speed, so, you know, you really... Quite a lot of grain in them as well. Um, so you really had to use the grain to try and feel the reeds. It's 12 hole. Um, one of the things I've noticed about these is how good your proximity was. You were hitting it close. Yeah, I hit it. Actually, my iron play was, was, was pretty on point all day. And, I, and like I said, kind of a second ago, I felt like I made a couple of these that I sort of nearly shouldn't have made. And I missed probably three or four kind of inside eight feet that I felt like I should have made. I actually finished off by missing from about two feet on my last hole today. But, um, you know, they are, they're all center pure. Cup. That pure. one's center um, cup. How much did Ken help you on those greens? You know, it's funny, Kenny. Kenny typically doesn't really read the greens much for me, um, Let's have a but uh, I got him to help me on the greens today. And you know what? He was actually, he was on form. He's on form. Typically, I give Kenny my caddy. I'll give him a little look at it. You know, early on in the, in the week, I'll let him read a couple and I'll just, typically he just gets benched. That's him done for the, for the rest of the weekend and he gets just to hang out. But, um, you know, I felt like I wasn't seeing them super well early on in the round today. So I kind of pulled Ken in and I felt like he was seeing them really well. So. That kind of helps me commit to my lines, commit to my reads. But, you know, one of the big things we kind of worked on in practice a couple of days ago, I really felt like last week in Mayakoba, I struggled on my left riders a little bit. And something I've been working on my putting is I've been kind of setting my body first to the line and then setting my, the putter head second. And I felt like on my right lefters, I was really aligning myself very well. But for some reason, on my left right putts, I didn't feel like I was lined up very well. So. We did a bit of work on it a couple of days ago, and I felt like my lower body was very open, and my upper body was kind of shut, so I wasn't seeing down the line very well. And, you know, alignment and setup, as you know, uh, is so key to how you, how you align the putter head. If you're, if you're in great position, you know, you can look down that line and align the putter head really well, but if you get, like, out of shape, your eyes and the putter head are just not kind of in sync and you don't really align the putter head very well. So something I worked on was really trying to, trying to set the putter head down first on my line, make sure I get my lower body a little bit more shut, and then just balance up my upper body. And I really felt like that helped me today on my, on my left riders. And that is all routine you're talking about there, GMAC. How important is routine in putting? Yeah, routine's huge in putting. You know, I, you know, we were talking about putters. I mean, I've been using this same putter for actually 18 years. Um, you know, Odyssey, pop the face out and pop a new one in every now and again but um, you know for me you know putting's been one of the more consistent parts of my game for the last 15 years and routine's really important you know like for me I'll talk you through my routine real quick but uh, you know back here I nearly feel like I'm trying to visualize the pot I'm trying to visualize speed because obviously you know you can't have a read without speed um, you know so 
I, sometimes I'll come back here and I'll nearly kind of feel like I'm throwing the ball down the line. I'm trying to see, I kind of put in curves. I, I'm not really a guy, sometimes if you ask me on a breaking putt where I was aimed, I, I really wouldn't know sometimes, but I'm, because I, I see the curve and I see kind of where the ball enters the hole. So like here, I'm seeing this putt entering kind of seven, seven, seven thirty on the clock face if you like. And then I try and just match my, you know, come, come here, set the putter head, to match that entry point of the hole, feel my speed. So I look at the I look at the hole. Something I'm trying to teach my little seven-year-old boy at the minute, you know, when he's having his practice strokes, the target tells you everything you need to know. So you're really looking at that hole, trying to feel, feel the pace, feel the speed, and then really try and get in over the ball, repeat what you just saw. Something I love about your putting and your setup is it almost seems like you get the toe down initially. How much does that help the strike? It's something I teach my students. For sure, you know, I, I love the whole kind of like, you know, like you say, high hands, yeah. like Steve Stricker, you know, one of the greatest putters probably ever and, uh, you know, for a long time. And for me, what it does, I feel like it kind of locks my wrists in and it kind of helps me, it helps me kind of have more of that big muscle uh, putting stroke rather than kind of handsy and armsy. So I kind of feel like if I get my hands high, that locks my forearms in, and I try and putt with my upper body a little bit more. So I think it's a, it's a good okay. way to putt. I'm going to set the scene. You get to uh, Las Vegas Country Club, and you've got to get acclimatized to the greens. What process do you go through to help with pace, re green reading? Yeah, I mean, so something I do in practice rounds, I mean, it's unusual. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big ball roller. So when I'm in a practice run, I'll visualize some of the pin positions, and I, I'll kind of roll. I'll, I'll roll balls uh, and I and I write down what I see. Typically what I, you know, typically the ball will react exactly how I my eye sees the pop, but every now and again I'll roll a ball and I'll go, hold on, that did something a little weird. Um, you know, and I'm visualizing pin positions. This is the uh, the party hole, the eighth hole. I'm assuming we're gonna have a back left pin one day. So I'm kinda, I roll and I kinda visualize some of the lines and, and that really just kinda helps me come the weekend. Um, and then I keep, keep a library of these books, my caddy Kenny does uh, over the years, sort of like a little putt library, um, you know, of, of rolls and putts that I've hit. And uh, that really helps me dial into the grains a little bit. You know, sometimes when you come to a new golf course, you may be looking for like a general pull of the line. We talked about the grain and the grains this week. Depending on what surfaces, what type of grasses, you know, what the general pull of the land is. There's just many ways to read putts. And on a week to week basis, you have to decide which it is. Like I say, grain's quite a big this week, I feel like. And uh, I'll continue to really be looking for the grain on the greens to help me read these. And how do you judge that? It's so hard sometimes to, you know, know how much it's gonna break, how much the grain's gonna come into play. Have you got any tips on that? Yeah, for sure. I feel like, you know, if you read a putt and, you know, you your eye sees left, right, and then you come to the low side and you look, and you see it very dark and you know the grass is coming this way so you've got slope and you've got grain down, going down the slope so you probably have to read a little bit more into that. I had a couple of reads today where I felt like I saw one thing but the grain was slightly the other way. That's the worst. That's the worst. You know, you're like, no. When you see one thing in it, don't yeah, be absolutely Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so typically you have to try and then straighten out your read a little bit, you know, go with the initial pull but know that the grain's going to hold it up a little bit. So. You know, it really comes with skill and experience and just kind of being around the world and seeing different types of conditions, different types of situations. And, uh, you know, luckily I've, I've held a few good putts over the years. Um, I need to hold you, a, I US Open beat Tiger, yeah, well, you've been modest. I, I've held a few okay ones, but uh, I need to hold a few more good ones this weekend so I can try and compete here. And uh, great day for Smash, obviously part of the team, part of the boys, um, you know, prop really Happy the way I played today, and I'm looking forward to getting back at it tomorrow. Like I say, I felt like I left a few on the greens today, and I can definitely uh, see some low scores out here this weekend. Well, we love watching you see you play really well. So, string lines, tee pegs, do you do any drills like that? Yeah, so I'm around the clock guy. I like, I like tee pegs, and uh, Jeff Pierce, who's Brooks Kopka's putting coach uh, right over here, he actually helped me dial in my kind of round the clock drill this week. I Instead of putting to a hole, we just went putting to a tee just to try and just to try and really dial in, um, you know, my, my focus and my starting lines, you know, so six tees around, three, four feet, just a tee in the middle, and really just trying to, you know, instead of making six in a row into a hole, trying to hit that tee six times in a row. So just dial in the, the starting lines, dial in the alignment a little bit. You know, to me, Brooks Kopka is probably one of the best putters in the world right now. And uh, 
you know, I was trying to, I was trying to get some information off Jeff, his coach, which, which is the great thing about live golf. Go What's what that? did you get, G Mac? Give us some golf. Yeah, like I say, just putting to that tee. They, 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 they really don't use the hole much from inside 10 feet. Um, you know, putting to tees. Uh, and like I say, I think one of the great things about live is that we get to operate as a team. We get to learn from each other. Being, you know, being around guys like Taylor Gooch, who won three times last year. Jason Kokrak, who's a, a world-class player and, and obviously Brooks, you know, five-time major champion. You're trying to just soak little nuggets from them. You know, obviously, I've been around a long time myself. I, you know, I feel like I know a thing or two about a thing or two. But you're always, you know, this is a beauty, beautiful thing about the game of golf. You're always trying to be better. You're always trying to learn. You're always trying to, you know, pick something up from the best players in the world. And, you know, the the, the beauty of, of live is that little team element where, you know, you you just operate, you know, as a team and you try and make each other better. Let's see one more. One more. Let's and see. then G Mac, very special. We're going to get you to rate some swings quickly. Okay. Afterwards. Swing ready. But let's Done. see. Let's see you roll the okay, rock. Okay. Let's see. We've got a ten footer here. Get the putter head down. Line that correctly. Shut my lower body down. Square my upper body. Oh, he doesn't miss. <laughs> I need to make some more of those. <laughs> <laughs> save them. Save them. Right. Where is the monitor? We need to rate some swings. Where is the monitor? I want to see another one. The monitor's gone missing. Okay. I need to do a bit of work on these anyway, so I'm happily yeah, happy keep enough. Going. So another thing I notice is ball position. It is directly below your sternum. Yeah. So I mean, I think, like we talked about earlier, alignment and setup. You know, where your eyes are positioned really dictates how you align the putter head and see down the line. So you know. I think everyone's ball position, you know, everyone's a little unique, a little different. One of the great things about putting is there's a hundred different ways to do it. You know, just look around the putting green. So many different ways to do it. But, uh, you yeah, know, for me, I like my ball position slightly forward of center. Um, I like my eyes slightly inside the ball. I like to try and keep my head as still as I can. Let that putter head just work. That's another bit of gold I teach my students. You throw a dart inside the line, so exactly that. Get your eye line I, I just have never seen a great putter in the world have his eyes beyond the ball. Yeah. To me, it's always on the ball or even on the inside of the ball. So you can see that line better. Right, are you ready to rate some swings? Well, Be kind, uh, uh, okay? Of course, of course. Let's go, here we go. Close. The Super Can 74. Ooh. That's not bad. A little over the top, but I mean, it doesn't go left from there. This makes sense. Let me see. I like that move. That's a good move. Keep doing that. More of that. Uh oh, posture issue here. This guy needs to stand up a little taller. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He ended up nice and tall, but I think he needs to start a little taller. Get those hands a little higher. Uh, yeah. Okay. Posture. Fix that. A little slow. Here we go. This is an interesting driving wrench. Uh, oh, I'm not sure I've got that shot. I gotta be honest with you, Spencer. Spencey hustle. It's a good-looking golf swing, actually. That gives me anxiety. Yeah, doing it in your front uh, we don't want to know where this ball landed, most likely. But that's uh, that was on point. That was on point. Oh, here we go. A little lifty in the back swing, but I, I like it. I like it. I got a couple, I got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old who are, you know, hitting a lot of balls right now, so I, I love seeing kids fall in love with the game. Get after it, get after it. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Hit it hard, hit it far, and we'll figure the rest out later. That's kind of what I try and tell my kids. You've got all the gold dust today. Thank you so much for sharing so many nuggets, and keep playing great. It's great to have you on. Yeah, no, thanks, Rachel, and uh, look forward to having a good weekend. Thank you. Cheers, Jimmy. Good. Amazing, amazing, amazing from Rachel Drummond. Appreciate your time, G Mac. That was a lot of fun to watch, right, Jerry? Absolutely. <laughs> Stick around for more right here at Club 54 post round show. All right, now we've been talking a lot about the individual's performance today, but let's talk a little bit about what team to watch. Check this one out, y'all. Probably six or seven teams that could they could win the thing and you wouldn't be surprised. It's okay, look really strong. Every day it was some someone shooting like five, six on the park. They learned how to win and they just kept winning. Torque is so deep, you know, like they go one through four as good as anybody. Obviously the crushers we won last year, extremely solid. 
pressures of what they did last year. I feel like you have to pay attention to them. They're the ones on the mountaintop right now. They're holding the trophy. They got their hands on the trophy. Nobody else does. You know, the Fireballs are going to be a strong team this year. Having Pooch in there, who's, who played really good in the second half of the season, is going to be a good team. I'm only focused on our team, to be honest with you. That's, that's the only team I care about. What Brooks has done with Smash, that's definitely going to be a team that we're going to be battling out quite a bit this year. Any team that Taylor Gooch happens to be on is obviously a team you got to kind of watch out for. I mean, they're going to be super strong. The Stingers are always a very strong team. They've won tournaments. Louis coming on really strong. Four aces are always going to be the four aces. They've created that name. They've created that environment. Four aces, obviously, with Dustin and them, are always going to be strong in the addition of Harold Barner. They are, I mean, great four players. He really is everybody, right? I mean, it, it's tough. There's so many teams to be looking for. I mean, I'd say all of them is a safe answer. And here's some more social game time for Aces. You called it. You called it, Jay. They're, they're <laughs> too tough and too good to lay down for too long. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. I want to talk a little bit more about today. And, uh, And I want to talk to you more a little bit today about the individual play. Yes. Uh, we had Paul Casey just yes. put on an absolute show. It, it seemed close between everyone, but Paul Casey really just nailed yeah. it today. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we have a bunched up leaderboard at the top with uh, some sevens and uh, then a bunch of fives and a ton of fours and threes. But Paul Casey's a guy in his mid-40s now who's has had a tremendous career on the PGA Tour. He's had a tremendous career in team play at the Ryder Cup. And, but unfortunately, between all of that, he's a guy who's extremely fit and has always been in fantastic shape. And it's always the fit guys who gets hurt because he's battled more injuries than, than most players have uh, that have been through what he has. So he's healthy again. I think the Live League schedule really, really uh, helps him to perform his best because there's not as much wear and tear on the body doing this. And there's no doubt he can play that kind of golf every single day. He's got a lot of great golf ahead of him. He even said in his interview to the press earlier in the flash area, my speed's still the same. I might be getting up there in the age a little bit, but my speed's still the same, so there's no reason I can't play the same golf. Well, let's take a look at some of his highlights here. Jerry, I'd love to hear from you about them, but check it out. Here we go. Paul Casey, what a day. 12, day one. Yeah, 12T, par three. And there it is. It's up. It's in the air. I forget the distance here, but when you see a guy staring at it that long, you know he likes the feel of it. You know he likes the line of it, and that was nearly perfect. It doesn't get any better than that, really, right? Yeah, but no matter how good you hit it, this club has to cooperate. you got to get the putter working in, in order to really take advantage of it. Otherwise, you know, you turn a, a, a good 68 or 69 with a, with a hot wand and then a hot bunker game, as he did here at 18, <laughs> into a really low round of 63. I watched him hit that, too. There was, he had a member of his team, that was, or his group, that was making their way around the lake and he like he wasted no time hitting it i think it's like he wanted to get it over with and he just jarred it then the big bender here at, at five that. oh my goodness yeah finds the bottom of the cup those are the <laughs> difference makers those type of putts are ones you feel like you should make but rarely do you make many of them and he does it again right here at seven yes making it look easy uh -huh. All right, now that was individuals. Let's take a look at the team leaderboard here from today. Any okay. Ra Range goats up top. Uh, Uline <laughs> shot four under par, 66. His score didn't count. That's how good they played today. That's insane. Yeah, Jerry. that is insane. That's uh, that's a nice throwaway score to have. I mean, also what it excites me is just we we have no idea what's going to happen in the next two days. No. And with these scores, anything seems like it can happen. Right. Of course, it's gettable. And then four scores counting on Sunday, those become extremely volatile. We saw it last year, last week on Sunday for the first time counting all four scores. How quickly things could change. Uh, but the, they're all keeping an eye on it. Make no mistake about it. It means a lot to these guys. Definitely right. a great day for the four aces as well. Great day for the four aces. Uh, who would you say needs to make the most adjustments after watching today? From a is team standpoint, to I mean, Stinger down there at two under is, is just unthinkable. They are such a consistent team and so talented. Uh, and, and that just shocks me, really. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So obviously, Range Goats doing their absolute thing today. Uh, let's look at some highlights from the Range Goats. Check it out. And here they are. That's 
Well, that's Matthew Wolf, birdie at 13 with the shorts on. Then there's you line and birdie at 17 earlier in the day with the uh, rain pants on, but he took those off later and he has shorts on too. I don't know. They're absolutely nuts to be playing in shorts. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't know shorts. how they're doing that, but well, they're doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's Thomas Peters. That's but it was uh, it was the, it was the captain Bubba Watson who hasn't had his best stuff since rejoining Liv after the injury and surgery, and he uh, he's finding it. He's dialing it in. Look at this one right here. He's fun to watch play. I know you haven't watched him play a whole lot, but a lot of guys try and hit the ball really straight. Yes. He can't see straight. He doesn't hit the golf ball straight. Every shot he sees has to curve. He'll stand on the fairway with a wedge or a sandwich in his hand and see a 20-yard draw or a 10-yard slice. I don't know how he does it, but that's the way he plays it. It's artistry. Gotta love that. Bubba actually, uh, he jumped in our show earlier today, our pre-round show. Uh -huh, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Had a good time with him earlier. And here are some social tweets here. Range goats are absolutely clicking today. Goat gang, I like the goat gang thing. Yeah. I gotta love that. What is a group of goats called? Uh, you know. Is it a herd? A uh, I don't know, that's a good question. Let's go we'll with herd, it. yeah. He's, he's nanny goat though, he <laughs> is the king. <laughs> yes. Balling out there, all right. And look at this, range goats. A rocket in Vegas. Yep. I gotta love this. All right, we're gonna take a look back at what happened in Maya Cobra. Those were warmer days for us, Jerry. Um, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but let's take a look back at all the action in Maya Cobra. Take a look. Day one of the 2024 Live Golf League is finally upon us. Hold on a second. There's a new sheriff in town. John Brown is marching with his lead to 13. The wind is in his sails. Relentless. Staggering display today by Waco Neiman. Waco Neiman to continue this scintillating round of golf. 59 for the Chilean. 59? Yeah. Did not see that happening, let's just say that. Cavalry charge is on. Waco yeah! Neiman must be just sensing the footsteps behind him. This is far from done. John Rahm. Money. Money. You know. You just know how badly he wants it. Are you not? It's this is gripping stuff in Maya Coba, Mexico. Legion 13 are marching. Okay, looks a ride for another birdie. Legion 13 at the moment are going to win, going away. This is going all the way. John Rahm ends on 17 and 18 with bogey on both. Likely just a two horse race now. Now has this to seal his first live golf title. It was just a throw of the way. Yeah, a little firm on that line, and so it continues. We will have the seventh individual playoff. 55 holes can't separate these two. And it's back to the 18th tee we go for a second playoff hole between Neiman and Garcia. He knew the minute he hit it, it wasn't enough. It is getting really dark. A real sense of theater between these two. <laughs> Sergio wants it. <laughs> Here we go. And we go again for a fourth playoff hole. Well, they know every green grass on this hole right now. And right about now, his heart just sank. Scene. Well, for the fourth time this year, starting. Waco Neiman to win. Up there. <laughs> and he wins his first live golf title. 
Uh, I hope everybody knows what I feel like I already knew is that, you know, we're definitely a force to be reckoned with, and uh, hopefully this is the first one of many. You know, I can't think of a better way to start my, my pro career. And the only thing I'm worried about is that I'm, I'm going to wake up and this all be a dream. So, um, very thankful yeah, you to be here. don't have to worry about that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, pinch me. It never gets old watching that Waco Neiman celebration in Mayakoba and Legion 13 with the champagne in the dark. So legendary. And here are some tweets from uh, a fan of Torque AGC, winner of the Mayakoba battle. Look at that. Uh, Neiman looking like an absolute legend there in that graphic. Did a great job in Mayakoba. Uh, we have a fun little segment called Listen Up, where we mic'd up some of our guys throughout the day. I love this. I think you will too. Check it out. I mean, if it, if, it's, if it stays like this, I think the 54 is good because it feels like it's more down. 27 cover, I mean, as long as you, as long as you get that thing in the air, I think it should be good. Yeah, just be aggressive on the line. Yeah, just trust it. Yeah, so I mean, we want to see we pitch this 80. That 80's playing 95. Just feels like it's dropped a little bit compared to what it was. So I'd definitely I'd play in 95s and take a bit off it. Be aggressive on the line as well, mate. What? I caught it before and it clasped open, and I think it's gone. It's gone bigger. I don't know whether you can move it though. Yeah, you're moving it right now. Oh, it's just a one linker. Huh? It's a one linker. 85 front, 90 pin. There's not really much going on around it, mate. It just sits it. Yeah, but I don't. There's only a couple of yards of breeze there. I wouldn't play for anything at the minute. I'd almost play the number, not far off the number. 90 total on the left side of that flag. I mean, it's not a great deal of wind there at the minute, but... Okay, come on, tee shot, mate. And now they, they're heavy as well, aren't they? No, they're not. All right, gotta love to listen up, and we have a special guest here, Ben Baller, who joined us in our pre-show. Uh, some would say one of the greatest jewelers of all time has made jewelry for some of the most popular music artists and more. Justin Bieber, to name a few. Yeah. But he's also a great friend of Bubba Watson, who uh, you follow <laughs> along now. today. Is that the case? <laughs> talk, talk about it, Ben. It's funny. Uh, Bubba got a chain from me today, and uh, his manager was worried that it might be too heavy. And I was like, no, it's just like it's like the perfect amount of diamonds. And um, so uh, I was originally going to walk with Bryson, I guess. And they're like, no, you're going to walk with Bubba nine holes. And I was like, all right, cool. And then he was sticking them, like GIR is crazy fairways. <laughs> and after the second hole, he's like, hey man, it's gotta be the chain. And I'm like, nah, man, come on. <laughs> and then he went on like a little birdie run, two, three birdies in a row. And I was like, oh my God, it's the chain. He's like, let's go. <laughs> and knocking in the putts, knocking in the birds, and then went to the party hole. And it, it was crazy, cause we were walking in a tunnel and he's like, hey, how long you walking? And I was like, uh, nine holes. And he goes, all right, finishes the nine hole and he's up um, almost T1 and he was climbing up and he did, but he was T1 for a little while. And as we're leaving at the ninth hole, he goes, where are you going? I was like, I gotta go to another hole. He goes, why don't you stay for a little bit? And I didn't know the, the superstitious <laughs> thing. He was like, no, I'm dead serious. So why didn't you stay? Is it because I you had, had to, some duties to yeah, do Yeah, I had, I had to do some content. So, and that's my boy, but and I felt bad, but he was running he's T3, range goats are number one. So it was like a nice little good luck charm. I felt good about that. You actually had something important to do here with Liv, with some of your jewelry. Tell, yes. tell the fans who may not know uh, what you were here to do today. So today um, I presented uh, three new uh, players, uh, the Live Promotion Coins. So that was really cool, Kale, Jin, and uh, Kieran, and they were super excited. They've seen them before in Abu Dhabi. I couldn't make it there because it was um, I had my kid's Christmas program during that time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I was able to customize their names and laser them, and they were ecstatic about it. So that was kind of cool to see these dudes, you know, come in, and, and I don't think they've ever seen, you know, a $15,000, you know, piece of jewelry that's, you know, it's and, pretty crazy. And there's a tweet there. Yeah, we got a look at them when we were over there in Abu Dhabi. Sorry you didn't make a trip. It was actually quite a bit of fun, but those are really, really cool, as is pretty much everything 
you have made. I got a question for you, though, Ben. It's a little deeper than a lot of stuff we're talking about, if you don't mind. Bubba and those guys, all these players are so committed to doing stuff outside of golf to help their community and so much to help kids. And, and you were an influencer before influencers were, are, were influential. You also <laughs> are, have been a hugely successful business person and a very artistic man as well. What advice would you give young people to who want nothing more than to be successful in whatever their chosen endeavor, be it art, sports, or science, or what have you. What advice has been most influential for your success? I think that one thing that I did is I never followed the pack, and I kind of kind of created my own path. And even though, you know, I just think that adversity is good. Yeah. I think the obstacles are good, you know, and um, one great quote I like is, uh, when you lose, don't lose the lesson. And I try to embed that in my kids, you know, heads and everything else. And if it comes too easy, then, you know, it's not going to stay for a long time. And I really truly, really truly believe that. And I think some people, they mistake my age. They think I'm like 36 or 37, you know, and I'm in my 50s now. So you're what? <laughs> I'm 51, man. Oh my God. Yeah, so. Jerry, you look really I surprised over there, Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. I use a lot of SPF. I use a lot of SPF. Well, what's your skincare routine is my next question now. Jeez. So, you know, I think um, when, when people understand that, uh, you know, basically, I've been putting in grind for over three decades. Yeah. Do you know, so this wasn't some overnight success. And they say every overnight success takes, you know, 10 years. And it's been 30 years. And so it's not like this is, this has been a long journey. Well, you're also a Korean American who played college sports in basketball and football at a time when that wasn't common. I mean, you I had was, obstacles. I was the first Asian American to ever play two sports at my university in history. So that was yeah. crazy. And, and yeah, I don't have the genetics. You know, to be, uh, and it was funny. I remember when I was going on my recruiting trip, they were like, I, you know, and back in the day in high school, you played both ways in football. Yeah. So I was a, um, I was always a corner and I played safety a little bit, but uh, I was always a, um, I was a running back my freshman year. Then I went wide receiver and that's where I became, like that's where this, you know, the, the, where the eyeballs came onto me. And then when I got to college, I was like, I'm 180 pounds, man. I don't want to get hit by these big dogs. I'm, I'm going to do the hitting. So, you know, I felt like cornerbacks had to have more skills. You had to be a wide receiver except doing it running backwards. Yeah. So I decided to do that, and I think um, it just didn't work out. But the, the basketball thing was, was always a great thing, too. And um, I just had to work. I felt like I had to work extra harder. Yeah. Now, you some know? people might hear your story right now who are watching, who are just discovering who you are and say, well, how did he get into golf? Now, you explained it a little bit earlier in our pre-show, yeah. but I would love for you to talk a little bit more about your journey in golf. How did you land here in golf? You've helped with music, producing albums that have went platinum, over 20 albums that yeah. have gone platinum. Yeah. You've played college sports. You're obviously a very successful jeweler. Now golf, how? Well, like I said earlier, um, I was with a really big sports agency, uh, XL, and uh, they represent Tiger, uh, Max Homa, Justin Thomas, um, uh, Colin Morikawa, uh, you know, some small time golfers like that. And it was funny because they never pushed the golf thing on me. And then uh, again, I said, TaylorMade had reached out. Would you like to do a collaboration? And then uh, we did these, uh, you know, 300 gold putters for $700 and they sold out in six minutes. Wow. And wow. I think wow. 90, <laughs> yeah, six minutes sold out. And they're going for like a thousand right now on eBay. And the funny part was 90% of my fan base doesn't even play golf. So I think they just had them just as like trophy pieces. I was like, no, use them. Wow. So um, I finally uh, decided to play a little golf. And uh, that was uh, May 2022. And in July, I had my first hole in one. Did you really? Yeah. Where at? At Weddington. Oh, wow. And I'll never forget, um, they thought that I was being robbed. So the police were called because I was screaming so loud. <laughs> and these people, I was on hole three, people on hole eight, and they saw me. So when a police came, I was at hole seven, and I was like, okay, what the hell happened here? Maybe someone got a heart attack. I didn't know what it was. And they said, what's going on? I was like, they were like, we heard screaming and everything. I was like, oh, I made a hole in one. They're like, oh my God, man. <laughs> so. Gotta love that. So you've been, you've been playing with a lot of stars. You know, you're not just playing with anybody. You, you've had the opportunity to play with some of the best golfers in the world and some of the most famous people in the world. Let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, um, I think my third pro-am, yeah, so my third pro-am, I played with John Rahm, played the Farmers, and we won. So taking home the trophy That's great. at Farmers was pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, that was definitely, that was an experience. And yeah, I've, I've had the, I've been blessed to play with Bubba, um, play with Brooks, play with, um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, yeah. I, you know, even on the, like during the off season, you know, uh, Siwoo Kim invited me out to Dallas and went out to play Byron Nelson with him and, and, um, 
I actually, he putt 28 times and I putt 27 times. He's like, what the hell? You know, he shot a 68 or something else, so <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, I've got to play with some really, really amazing people a lot. Like, you know, I mean, dozens of pro pro tour players. Well, look at that ring there. Uh, what is what is the process in creating? I mean, don't give away your secret sauce or anything, Ben, but. Uh, well, the basic process is one, we get the idea of the ring. Two, I create a hand wax mold. Once the mold is there, the mold gets, um, you know, it gets melted down and turned into, casted into, into uh, gold. Okay. And once it's in gold, we drill diamonds. I mean, we drill holes. Okay. And then from drilling holes, we set the diamonds, right? Everything gets set. Then from there, we do a high polish finish, and depending on what kind of increase, like that ring, look, if you look at the championship rings, even behind DeChambeau's name and Crusher's, we made sure the logo was exact, even a little skull. And then behind that, I used the dimples of the golf ball as a background to really make it extra special. So what, what is the creative process? Are you are you weighing in with some of the guys? Are you getting some input from them? Or So like, let's say for instance, Gordon Ramsay. He's not gonna sit there and do every single thing, right? He'll lay down the foundation, right? and then you got the people doing some work, and then you'll come in and do the finest and final polishing, you know what I mean? Like even Dr. Dre, when I worked for him, you know, he'd lay down the, 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 the original track, then someone comes in and starts playing a piano. He'll direct them, do the con you know conducting and stuff, and then come in and be like, all right, let me wrap this all together, and that's what I did, and then basically, um, you know, um, I think I was telling the story to the promotion guys. A lot of people don't know that um, I took one year off of jewelry completely took a year off. I didn't make any jewelry. I didn't want to. I was uninspired wow. and I was thinking about retiring. I just was playing golf two, three times a week. I was going everywhere playing golf and my comeback was to make the Live Championship rings. Wow, well, I want to talk to you more about your relationship with Bubba. I got a lot of questions. Jerry probably does <laughs> oh, too. Yeah. And speaking of Bubba, we're going to take a look at some off-season access with Bubba Watson. Check this out. Everybody's excited. That's what everybody wants to do. That's what, what impressed everybody about Liv and coming here is that they can be a team. And it goes back to high school days, goes back to college golf. You dream about being a GM or a franchise owner, and then you start doing it. As you know, me and you've had many hours of late night conversations trying to work this out. And then when Taylor said to me about the 10 year process, that's what got us yeah. thinking about it. Hold on, he said 10 year process. Well, why wouldn't we go get this 24 year old that's on top of the world in the same headlines of Victor Hovland and Morikawa. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a big piece. I think that man is good, and he's, he's young. There's movement, there's trades, there's new people coming in. Just like other sports, there's new, old, uh, there's people switching teams. That's the thing about a small roster, right? You only got four people. People call you Matt, Matthew, Wolf, Wolfie. Like, I've said it like, I want the team to get off on the right foot here, so what did you want? And he told me essentially, like, his mom calls him Matthew, Matt's fine, but Wolfie is what mo is probably the most common. So, yeah. That's he, what I'm just so you know, he's giving me permission to call him Wolfie now. Yeah. Bubba Watson in the range goes, them boys look good. And who's this guy right here? Ben. <laughs> that's your boy. Talk about yeah, it. Man, that's, <laughs> Where that is this was, from? That's from uh, Rich Harvest Farms, Live Chicago. He uh, was on my podcast. And it's funny, I've done over 400 episodes of a sh my show, and that was the best interview I've ever done. Wow. Really? Ever. Yeah. That's a big statement on 400 episodes it of the was. people you have on. Oh, I've had some massive people. Uh, yeah. But I didn't know that we shared a few things some of the anxiety and thoughts that the anxiety got so bad, I thought that I was gonna die, I have a heart attack or something. Just other wow. things that we had shared and I think that uh, we connected really close there. And it was just a great, I felt like Barbara Walters. It was just an amazing <laughs> interview, it was, it was crazy. That's amazing. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about, you have a golf nickname. I want you to tell the story, why you have oh. it and who gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so my coach at the time, Ron Del Barrio, he's a, um, he was a tour player for a little bit. It's, uh, I always played better on the back nine by like five to 11 strokes. Okay. So they call me back nine baller, back, back nine, nine baller. Ben, you know? Back so, nine Ben, I yeah. love it. So yeah, that, that was uh, my nickname and it was like funny. I was like, I'll take it. And no matter what to this day, last 45 rounds. Still? I, yeah, yeah. And no matter what, it's always been. The it's, other day I shot a 48 at Trump and I, sh I was like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> I might not break 100. Then I end up shooting a 38 on back two over. Wow. It's better yeah. to be a closer in any sport. <laughs> I feel <the> right. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Uh, all right, let's take a look at your swing. Oh, this, is, this is a bad drive, but I'm, uh, let's let's see Let, it. Let's look let's at this here. Let's take a look at uh, how the coach is doing with you. Yeah, Ooh, this setup one's is bad. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Very good action going back. Oh. You could get a little bit more shoulder turn, but it's really it. cold that day. And, but you know what though? It was still 247 cent of the fairway. Well, wasn't then, bad. That looks good. It's, it's, you're no, it's you're doing your bad. thing, Ben. Good for lag. Sure. Really good lag. Held the angle late. Yeah. The funny part was it still made the center. And uh, what's his face went OB, so I was like, all right, well, we're in the. <laughs> I made I uh, that. 12 or 14 fairways yesterday. That's what you said earlier. That's yeah. that's awesome. And these are yeah. not big wide fairways. And no OBs out of you? No OBs. Okay, that's impressive. Oh, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. Very impressive. Ben, who would you say your your favorite celebrity is to golf with? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, like yeah. who who who's the most good time? Favorite Robert loves his golf. Uh, Justin Bieber for sure. Justin Bieber. Yeah, for sure. You got to elaborate on that one, Ben. Yeah. What? Why? JB. Um, JB. jay has been one of JB's. Uh, his best friend that runs company with him is from Jupiter, so he's like been like with him. And, and and funny thing was Justin was with my coach a long time ago, and I think that we just kind of forget about everything and learn a lot about ourselves on the golf course. Uh -huh. A lot of parallels with life there, and like the integrity part comes in there too, right? Yeah. And you know, it'd be like. There's for four, right? I'm like, hey, bro, don't check me, man. You know, like, it's funny, but it's it's it's, it's a good time. Man, so cool to meet you. Really cool. Thanks for all thank the work you, you do so it, for, for us as well. It's really so Baller, cool to thank meet you so you. much for joining us. Jerry Fultz, you you're so a stud. Much. You've been absolutely phenomenal. And thank you guys for watching us here at Club 54 Post Round Show. I'm your host, Christian Crosby, and we're closing out here from Las Vegas until, of course, tomorrow. We'll see you at the pre-show. Have a great day. And stay tuned. Peace. <laughs>